before you to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. What if we said a bank isn't a place to lock up money? It's a place to set it free. What if the point of banking wasn't to bank at all, but to put your ideas to work? What if your bank asked, what if, a little more? Well, what if we told you, we do? We're American Bank and Trust, where what if meets why not? If you are ready to change what you get out of banking, start a relationship with us. What if you made the move today? Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. Starting the first bank in South Dakota was the easy part, earning the confidence of local farmers, helping families account for their dreams, and securing the future for countless businesses took us a little longer. We owe it to the hard workers, big dreamers, and forward thinkers out there. Thank you for making South Dakota a great place to call home. World's only corn palace for half number two between the Hamlin Chargers and the Howard Tigers. Once again, still having some technical difficulties. Apologize. Our main camera's down, so we're using the side camera as the main camera. Getting internet problems, and got Nathan and Troy up here from Cole Arch, joined by Charlie Preen. Getting through all the action so far. Not a whole lot's been going on, Charlie. No, that's very true, Cole. Having a, a five-point game right now is, honestly, it feels like a, a bigger lead for Hamlin. As I feel Hamlin's controlled this game in all aspects. But, you know, Howard's staying right with him. And, you know, I'll tell you what, Howard's not out of this game. They definitely are not, especially considering it's only a five-point game. And what we've seen from them so far this season, we've seen a lot different play from them. Very true. But I think this Hamlin defense is pretty good too, Cole. That it is. Early foul on Hamlin was Zach Van Meter in his third. Early turnover again by Howard. Excuse me, so Hamlin's got it. Another foul. They're getting the foul underneath. It was going to be on Howard. Fouls on Tayden Hoyer, his second. First team foul. Still five-point game. Three ball on the way. Good. Tyson Stevenson for the Hamlin Chargers, leading all scoring. He's got 10 points in the night. 25-17 is the lead for the Chargers. Yeah, the Chargers got to have Stevenson, especially from that three-point range, to be deadly because they need to expand this gap because I think everyone kind of expected this game to go Hamlin's way um, right away. But Howard's staying in the ball game, and they are right there with an easy bucket. Colt Kepsel, his fourth point of the night. Cuts this deficit down to six points. Minute and ten played so far in the third quarter. Three ball right side, good. Jackson Wadsworth, his first three points of the night. And now it's a nine-point game. You know, that offense is kind of what we expected from Hamlin coming into this one, Cole. And easy three and a steal there. Let's see what happens. Neuendorf, layup, good. Boy, this went from a five-point game to a quick 11. It looks just getting out of hand. A press getting put on from the, the Chargers right now. It's definitely the Charger defense that is stunting this Howard play. Shot up no good. A rebound. Hamlin, they want to push. Neuendorf. Traveled. Gets it to Stevenson. Stevenson's going to travel out front. He tried going before he actually set his feet up, and uh, it's, it got him. Third game of the day, like we said, from this Hoop City, the Hoop City Classic inside the Corn Palace. Game one, Ethan came back, outscored MCM 16-4 to in the fourth quarter to win that one, and then Viber Hurley in the second game just destroyed Gregory. That's close to 10 seconds back there, Cole. I think they passed it as 10 seconds was expired. Right. And now we're going to get a foul. So this is going to be a fresh shot clock regardless. 
uh, falls quick on note, Wadsworth his first. Quick note, the game following this one features a really, really unique and special basketball team coming from Thunder Basin, in Wyoming. Uh, a game to watch for is that should be a special group of girls coming from Wyoming. Campbell County. Or, yes, Campbell County, excuse me. Two Wyoming teams, Thunder Basin and Campbell County here. Correct. They're all going to play today and tomorrow and the next day if I, um, if I remember that correctly. I believe so. I don't know if I missed a score down there. It's now 30-21. I believe I did. I was looking at the schedule. That's right. These stat sheets are messed up anyway. Three ball right side. Rattles in and out. No good. That was one, Wadsworth with a three. One Hamlin needed to have. Absolutely blow this game out into double digits again. I feel like these next few possessions are kind of critical possessions, Cole, as how, how as to how this game finishes out. 5-11 here in this third quarter. A nine-point lead for Hamlin. You know, Hamlin's got to have some offensive uh, ability here, obviously, but being able to stop Howard is going pretty well for him right now. Yes, it is, and it doesn't matter how you could say poorly their offense is playing. Their defense has been holding Howard to very low scoring. You know, and defense winning championships in, in everything, and they're showing it right now. Three ball on the way. That one's good. Not getting out in the perimeter, and Howard makes him pay for it. Kepsel's first point since the second quarter. He's got seven. They cut the deficit down to six. Neuendorf kicks it left side three and hits nothing. I wonder if that was tipped. That's very possible. Rebound controlled by Howard. And the pass is going to be out of bounds. So another turnover by the Howard Tigers. Not really help, helping themselves there in that category. It's not. And, you know, turnovers plague everything in the, this, this sport. And if you have turnovers, you limit your turnovers, you can be successful. But having these turnovers is, you know, proved to be the, the fault so far for the Tigers. Hamlin's got it now up six. Pass almost went in the hoop. I don't know. I, I, was, <laughs> I was like, what is that, a shot? If it was a shot, that was a very aggressive shot because he, 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 he chucked that it. thing hard. Snapped it up there. Howard's got it now in their backcourt. Press it's being applied by the Chargers. It's actually a really nice press put together by, by Hamlin. Two on one. Shot no good. So Offensive rebound is put back. The goal of Hamlin's press is to just make him get up a, a contested shot, and, you know, they're doing that. And they're going to get a 10-second here sooner or later, I'd assume, because they're playing a very nice press so far. It was very close both times. That one about 8 seconds. The first one was probably 9.9 .9 seconds. <laughs> Three balls, top of the key, rattles in for Hamlin. A little rattler falls for him, and Hamlin keeps that press on. Maybe this is what they needed to do starting off this ballgame. Ryland Bowden, 6 points, both off 3-pointers. And that one took nine seconds, if you're counting at home, for Howard to break that press. Layup foul, count the bucket. Keeping him in the ball game. You know, just one possession could uh, make the trick for uh, Howard being able to get past this press. And Hamlin, you know, answering, obviously. But a three-point play will, would, would answer the call. Tatum Hoyer, that's his fifth point of the night. Fouls on. Tyson Stevenson, his first team's fourth. For the Hamlin Chargers. Free throw off the back iron, no good. So the lead will stay at five for Hamlin. Neuendorf brings it up, gets it to Bowden. Back to Neuendorf, he's going to drive. Kick underneath, reverse layup, good. What a great dish from Neuendorf down low. Brennan Kessler, his first two points of the quarter. Makes the score now 35-28. Press still being applied by Hamlin. However, Howard's... Getting a lot better at breaking it. Luke Kepsel underneath, good. That's what they need to do. We'll have a timeout called by Howard. Timeout Howard, a full timeout. We're going to take it with him. We'll be back to the world's only Corn Palace in 60 seconds.
Acres Ahead is back with AgTegra Cooperative. Now is the time to secure product, lock in early season prices, and receive delayed payment terms on your agronomy inputs. Fertilizer, seed, and crop protection purchases from Acres Ahead also qualify for triple play grain premiums, diesel discounts, and feed discounts. Contact your local AgTegra agronomist to learn more on how Acres Ahead can maximize your farm's earning potential straight from the start. AgTegra Cooperative. Strong. Stable. Dependable. Welcome back to the Corn Palace. Cole Larch joined by Charlie Preen, taking you through all the action. This quarter, much more interesting than the first two, wouldn't you say? It really is. You know, we see a press, uh, uh, some defensive action from Hamlin as they're throwing this press at Howard. But Howard's doing a really good job at breaking that press, Cole, and it's it's showing to be profitable for them as they're only down five. Yeah, it's just it almost like that press just kind of sped up the game a little bit, got each team going, and now they're starting to make shots. Howard seems to have a little bit more life now. Still in that 2-3 zone that they've been playing all game. First two quarters really good with it. Earlier right in this quarter, kind of got away from it because of the fast break. Howard trying to make Hamlin shoot that outside shot. Pass underneath, dunks, slams it down. Brennan Kessler throws it down for Hamlin. You cannot leave that baseline free in a 2-3 zone. He's got eight points now. The lead extends to six, or seven, excuse me. Turnover. And then turned over oh. again. We had a charger go down there in that corner. Oof. Down by the Campbell County. Campbell County girls got to see a Hamlin charger up and close. Oh, Hamlin backing off that press now. You know, that's interesting. Why Why? why now? That's a great question. Maybe, maybe he's wearing them out on the offensive side. That might be it as well. Maybe they're realizing that. Howard's really just starting to break it and get those wide open right. shots. Right, and if you can be successful with the press, maybe get a, a point here and there. I mean, the overall goal of the press is to steal some points, but if you're, if you're getting tired, you know, you got to have some ability to do something offensively, and I think that's why they broke off this press. Luke Kepsel, eight-footer, no good. He's going to get fouled on the way up, so now he will shoot two free throws. Foul is on. Easton Neuendorf, his first. Team's fifth foul of this third quarter. Kepsel's first shot, no good. So the rebound, or <laughs> the rebound. Three games in, I'm starting to lose it, Charlie. We got six more. Uh, that's not true. We have how many more? We have to go to the Pentagon, and <laughs> we have to come back, Cole. Uh, those are different days. I'm just talking about today. Both free throws by Luke Kepsel will be no good. So Hamlin will have it. They're just trying to extend that Howard zone at the moment. Foul called underneath. Foul is on. Howard number 32, Colt Kepsel. His second, team second of the half. And we're shooting free throws. Kessler at the line to shoot two. First one rattles in and out, no good. Second one on the way. Kessler second, also no good. Rebound controlled by Howard. Once again, apologize for all the technical difficulties. Still working through them. Got Troy and Nathan working on them. Keith Nimke taking a break for this game so we don't have a sideline reporter. Hoping to have a couple more games of that coming up later today and tomorrow and Friday. Pass almost stolen away. Howard's got six to shoot. And either going to shoot and foul will be called. I thought he might have walked with that one, Cole. They look close. Colby Clawson will go to the line. Falls on Easton Neuendorf, his second team's sixth. So if there's anything that's keeping Howard in this game so far, it's all the, it's all the fouls. They'll be shooting a lot of free throws later on. First one up and no good. Uh, 
Second free throw on the way from Colby Clawson. That's up, and that one's good. Clawson's first points of the ball game. Hamlin just keeps this lead, you know, keep extending this lead, keep staying in front. Howard's just not letting this one go, though. Now an eight-point lead for Hamlin. Newendorf drives baseline, pass out, will be tipped out of bounds off of Howard. So Hamlin will retain possession. Newendorf to throw it in. Gets it up top to Wadsworth. Back and forth, looking inside. Long three by Newendorf. No. Rebound controlled by Clawson. Boy, he was probably three feet behind the uh, college three-point line back there, Cole. <laughs> that's a long ways. That is a, that's a huck. That's some of the adjustments you have to make on this Corn Palace floor. Longer, wider, different three-point line markings. Volleyball court on there. You can ignore all those because these two teams get to play in the world's only. Tipped out of bounds. It'll be off of Hamlin, so Howard will retain possession. I've never personally played in the world's only. However, I have refereed here. Wow. And let me tell you, four games in a row on this Corn Palace floor did not feel great. So I noticed you emphasized longer, Cole. Yes. So the longer court, how does that uh, how does that affect you and the players? Well, it's just a lot more running than what you're used to. Usually, you take about three steps from half court to, and you're at the three point line. Here, it's probably five. There's a lot more back and forth. Newendorf, long three, no, and rebound will be controlled by Howard. Your score after three complete: Hamlin 37, Howard 31. We're back to the Corn Palace after this. We'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Metal Auto Group. Denny Metal, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks, and SUVs, imports, and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Metal Rapid Chevrolet. Starting the first bank in South Dakota was the easy part. Earning the confidence of local farmers, helping families account for their dreams, and securing the future for countless businesses took us a little longer. We owe it to the hard workers, big dreamers, and forward thinkers out there. Thank you for making South Dakota a great place to call home. At Northern State University, your future starts with an affordable education that's personalized for you. Experience hands-on learning guided by world-class supportive faculty. You'll also enjoy a full campus life with opportunities to choose from numerous student activities and events, all in a safe, welcoming community. At Northern, you'll find a college that's right for you, a place to belong. Your future starts here. Unleash your potential at Northern. Welcome back to the Corn Palace, game three of nine here at the Hoop City Classic. Hamlin leads 37-31. Charlie, that third quarter, definitely a lot better than the first and the second. Yes, it was. It kind of showed what these teams are kind of made of, um, what these teams can bring to the table and what, wor what works and what didn't work. You know, That press they started off with Hamlin, it looked pretty good right away, then they went away from it. We'll see if they go back to that if they need to, nursing a six-point lead. Three ball for Howard, no good. Fought for the rebound. That did not look nice. Lots of contact down there. I think we're going to get a foul called. Foul's going to be on Easton Neuendorf. That's his third personal team, seventh. So Howard will shoot a bonus. Front end will be good. Got a little roll. Cut the lead down to five. 37-32. Van Metrin comes in the game. 
you know, I was kind of expecting him to be a, a huge force down local and maybe they'll go to him to try to keep nursing this lead, but it's getting shorter and shorter. Howard has cut the lead to four now. Second free throw good, 37-33. Hamlin's got it. We'll see what they can do offensively against this zone that Howard's still playing. Then Mitrin put the ball up and is fouled. He'll go to the line. Foul is on Taden Hoyer. His third personal team's only third of the half. Van Meetren misses the first. So he, he will have a second free throw upcoming. Try and extend this lead to five. Second free throw is good. 33-38 your score. 7.33 to play in the ball game. Cole Lars, Charlie Preen. We have a whole crew up here today, Cole. <laughs> yes, we do. Troy and Nathan trying to fix all the technical errors. We had the internet go down, had a camera go down. Internet went down again. But you know what? Here we are. Yes, we are. Bringing you all the action here tomorrow at the Pentagon and back here on Friday. Layup up and good. Cold Capsule. Capsule looked really nice there with his finish and lead back to three now. Here it is, Cole. Yeah, this game's getting close just like the first one. Stolen away by Erickson. That's a huge defensive possession from the Tigers. All the way down to the other end. Cold Capsule again. And we're going to get a timeout called by head coach Todd Neuendorf. 38 37 year score. We're going to take it with him. We'll be back in 60 to the Corn Palace. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Danny Menhold Auto Group. Danny Menhold, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet. Say yes to 23 local and national lenders on hand competing for your business. Say yes to the most value for your trade with multiple appraisers bidding for it. Say yes and buy with no money down and no payments until March 2023. All credit applications accepted. Our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Danny Menhold Rapid Chevrolet. Every farm is unique, but all farmers have something in common. The desire to maximize their land and improve it for the next generation. You need a cooperative that offers peace of mind. Agtegra Cooperative is an ag partner that shares your values and is part of your community. From agronomy and grain operations to energy and feed, Agtegra will link your farm to the future. Agtegra Cooperative. Strong. Stable. Dependable. And we come back to the Corn Palace to a technical foul assessed to Hamlin on Easton Neuendorf. We all thought, or I thought at least, it was Todd Neuendorf, the head coach. No, that technical foul is going to be on Easton Neuendorf. Must not have said something that he should have. Yeah, no, I, I believe the, the, the foul was actually assessed from half court. So there was a quite a distance when something was said. So I'm not sure what's going to kind of happen here. We'll have shots, obviously. Um, but the first technical foul of the Classic goal. That is true. And as Todd Neuendorf, the head coach, called the timeout, Scott Sonny went to the scorer's table, looked at the scorer's table, looked over to the bench, and said technical foul. So it must have been loud enough to where he could hear it. First free throw will be no good. Will Meyer for Howard shooting him. He's down one. 6.40 to 7 to play. Two uncontested free throws here because of the technical foul. Second free throw up, and that one's also no good. So, I mean, you have this foul that comes from Neuendorf, and, and Howard will get the ball here, but wow. Huge swing of things as those free throws don't fall. Could have taken the lead for Howard. Absolutely. Take the lead with the ball back. That would have been a huge momentum play. Erickson trying to sort out the troops here. He picks up his dribble. Erickson's got it. It's a capsule. And a foul is going to be called underneath. They're going to get a hold. That's going to be the ninth team foul on Hamlin. So Howard's shooting free throws all the way. They wanted to go to Kepsel very badly there. Fouls on Tyson Stevenson. His second team's ninth, like I said. Shooting two, or shooting a bonus, excuse me, Luke Kepsel. First free throw up and good. That'll tie the ball game at 38. I'll tell you what, Cole, I did not expect the game to be like this. 
especially the way it started. That is very true. Um, but it, low scoring for sure, and Howard just take the, takes the lead. Wow. Wow, Cole. That's, I have no words. 39-38, <laughs> 30 to play in the game. Kepsel makes both free throws, gives his squad the lead after Meyer missed both technical free throws. So Hamlin's got it. they got to sort out some offense. Maybe you go back to the press, Cole, for Hamlin. That is definitely a possibility. We're going to get a foul called, a block called on Hamlin. Yeah, I believe that was called because he didn't have his feet set. But either way, foul's called. Can't change it now. And now we're going to get some discussion here on who it was on. Means Schoenfelder and Schroeder. Falls on Luke Kepsel, his first, team's fifth of the half. I think it's an aggressive play from Kepsel there. If you get that, that's a huge momentum. It is. Builder right there. What a finish inside. Layup good by Stevenson. Excuse me, Brennan Kessler. So they will take the lead back, now 40-39. Howard's got it, swinging around top. Will Meyer missed those two technical free throws. Passes off the leg. Now, do you think that's a, a kick? Charger. Is that a kick, Cole? I well, Heath and I have this discussion just about every game. Okay. He says, by rule, it probably is, but it shouldn't be called. And I now, always say, well, now aren't you refed a lot of games in your life? What do you call there? Well, usually I ref junior high. So if there's a, if it's a running clock, you call it every time. But if it's not running clock, you don't call it. <laughs> Okay, understandable. <laughs> first, we're shooting free throws here. Uh, Jackson Wadsworth, his first one is good. 41-39. <laughs> Second free throw on the way. That one's also good. And there's some of those junior high games that I ref that you just want to get it over with. Oh, yeah, I, I totally get it. <laughs> You've got business to attend to. Erickson, pass underneath, down low. Capsule. Kepsel spin, no, travel they called travel. on the spin. You know, Howard, just it felt like Howard was going to take this momentum, and I still believe Howard has a momentum swing in this one, but Hamlin's just continuing to stay alive and stay in this game, which it feels weird because Hamlin's controlling the game, I feel, in, in a lot of aspects. And they, they started to come back with that press, then they brought they took off the press, and it just, I don't know, it Still a five-point game, though, 44-39. It is, and Stevenson's doing a really good job for himself down low and creating those buckets, but uh, his finishes are impressive. Kepsel, Erickson, almost out of bounds there along that sideline. Going to pass it. Right side, swinging around top. Down low. Colt Kepsel. Right-handed finish, no good. Rebound controlled by Hamlin. They want to push. They don't have numbers. We'll see what they do. Drive all the way. Layup, no. Now, you're looking for a quality shot in these last uh, four minutes and 38 seconds, and I don't know, I'm don't i not sure if that was the greatest shot and the one that Hamlin was looking for. Now, if you're Hamlin, is this the time where you try and take 20 seconds off the shot clock every offensive possession? You know, being up five, it can come back to bite you, so I think you go down the court and try to get two more buckets before you think about that. We'll see what they can do here. Up five. 4.18 to go in the ball game. Game three of the Hoop City Classic. First game, Ethan came back 16 to four run in that fourth quarter to beat MCM. And Viber Curley blew out. Gregory offensive foul called on Hamlin. And Hamlin's not too happy about that. No, they are not. And the Howard fan section is very loud. Fouls on Tyson Stevenson, his third, team's 10th. Full timeout called by Howard. We're going to take it with them. We'll be back to the Corn Palace in 60 seconds. We hope you are all enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. 
your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it, and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Welcome back. Day one, game three at the world's only Corn Palace. Hamlin Chargers lead the Howard Tigers 44-39 out of that timeout. What do you think Howard's talking about there? You know, you got to go back to that offensive spurt. You have to be successful offensively and try to get some stops because Hamlin is doing a very good job down low and creating buckets for themselves. Howard has to create some offense and do whatever they can um, with their bigs down low, I believe, and, and perimeter shots are kind of hard to come by so far. And it's like it's not like they're doing a terrible job defensively. True. I think the defense is what's been keeping them in this game so far. Very true. And you know what? The defense of both of these teams are exceptional, I, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, it, it's going to be a fun last 3.54. Erickson's got it. Going to swing it around to Kepsel, left side. Cross-court pass to Meyer. Three ball, no. Offensive rebound, and then a foul called. Perimeter shooting is not the greatest today, and, and got a rebounding foul there. But you, you really see that if these perimeter shots fall every once in a while, you'd think the score would be a lot different. Fouls on Easton Neuendorf. That is his fifth foul. Now thanks to that technical foul. That is Hamlin's, if you're counting, 11th team foul this half. Howard will have two free throws. First one up and good. You know, Cole, if Howard can capitalize on 75% of these free throws, this game is going to get very close. Tayden Hoyer has a chance to bring it within a one possession game. Second free throw short. Rebound controlled by Hamlin. Hamlin needs a bucket here. They've been kind of stagnant these last couple minutes on offense. Wadsworth are going to swing it around up top. Howard's still in this 2 3 zone. I mean, it's worked for him so far. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It has. Hamlin's been. I mean, unable to go inside. They tried to there, and a foul was called, but they tried to go inside one time, and it really wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it seems like that zone is a perfect combination of outside pressure and inside defense because the guards just seems like they can't get it inside. Yeah, like they're said. struggling to get it inside there, and they're struggling to move it across the perimeter anyways. I just think that the, the, the defense from Howard has been pretty good. Anyone's got it? Pass underneath, reverse layup, good. Baseline. Can't give up the baseline yep. in that. Exactly. Can't give up the baseline in a 2-3 zone. So now Hamlin leads it by 6, 46-40. Just over three minutes to play in quarter number four. Howard, if they get a bucket here, that would be huge. If they need it. You don't want to get this to a three-possession game. That's very true, but a two, a two goes a long way here. You don't need a three. Absolutely. Any good shot right here to get your team some points. A high percentage shot. Exactly what you need. They've got four to shoot. Three. Two floater, no good. That's probably not your high percentage rebound, shot. Rebound poked away, and it will go to Hamlin. That was really good defense there from Hamlin. I'll tell you what. They, they had everything, their bases covered, if you will. But we're going to see a press from Howard here. Let's see if they can maybe get a 10-seconder. I think they're just pressuring that inbounds. Yep. They're going to let them dribble it up. Two and a half minutes to play. Layup all the way. Block called. Count the bucket. Huge. Tyson Stevenson went all the way down the court. Drove down the middle of the lane. He's going to get the bucket and the foul. Not a ton of Hamlin fans here, but they uh, they made themselves represent a little bit there as that bucket falls. Fouls on Ryder Erickson. His third, team seventh. Stevenson has a chance to make this a nine-point ball game. Or so I thought. So there we go. We're getting... Now the scoreboard's right. Looks like we had a little mix-up. Excuse me, fouls on number 32, Colt Kepsel. So that will be his fifth that, foul. So that's the discrepancy right now is I think they're talking about who the foul is on because that'll take Kepsel out of the game. Because originally the board said 30. I thought that was odd because it was Erickson pressuring the ball. Right. Way up in the in the backcourt. And he yeah, he was not standing down there to try to take that attempted charge, which ended up being a block in the end one. 
Colby Clawson will check into the game for Howard. Stevenson to shoot a free throw to make this a nine point ball game. Free throw up and good. 2.29 to play, 49 40. You're going to need a three pointer here, Cole, I think. I Either that or a very quick two. Because you need points and you need them now. Three ball, right corner off the mark. Rebound will be controlled by Hamlin. And it's now, if you're Hamlin, slow it down, wind down the clock. That works as well. That works as well. Tyson it's a quick Steven bucket. Tyson Stevenson drives all the way down the floor. Stevenson's been impressive, and I, he's really impressed me so far in these last two quarters is his ability to score. That's big. Huge bucket there for Howard. Makes it a 51-42 ball game. That was Luke Kepsel. Well, he will shoot a foul. Fifty-one forty-two. Kepsel a chance to make it a three-point play. Free throw up and good. Fifty-one forty-three minute fifty-eight left to play here in game number three from the Hoop City Classic. Just a reminder up next, we've got you all covered. Mitchell and Campbell County girls will say will face off about fifteen minutes after this one. Trying to keep a rolling schedule. Still going to be a little bit behind. But as we mentioned before, it's pretty normal for these kinds of classics. It is. You know, you figure each game takes an hour and a half, but, you know, that doesn't always happen, and they usually go over anyways, so. Foul on the way up. Foul's on Ryder Erickson. His third, now team's eighth. Shooting free throws is Stevenson for Hamlin. We might see an extension of this game if Howard keeps fouling like this. This might go on for another 10 to 15 minutes. Well, if Hamlin keeps missing their free throws, why not keep fouling? Stevenson, second free throw, good. Bags that one and makes it a 52-43 ball game. Nine-point ball game, 90 seconds to play inside the Corn Palace. Kepsel's got it. He's going to drive right side, lay up way off the mark. Blocked. So Howard will have it. 80 seconds now to play. Well, 80 seconds to play. You're down nine. You have to have a three pointer and a perimeter shot that comes up fast, and you have to go down the, <laughs> the court and foul. It's got to happen quick. And what they're doing right now is not going to work. Kepsel thought about three. Somebody needs to shoot. Erickson drives. Shoot out the shot of the block, no good. Rebound controlled by Hamlin. Hit out of bounds by Howard. They'll retain possession. 61 seconds to play. 52-43. Timeout called by Todd Neuendorf. We're going to take it with him. We'll be back to the Corn Palace in 30 seconds. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menhall Auto Group. Denny Menhall Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks and SUVs, imports and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menhall Rapid Chevrolet. At Northern State University, your future starts with an affordable education that's personalized for you. Experience hands-on learning guided by world-class supportive faculty. You'll also enjoy a full campus life with opportunities to choose from numerous student activities and events, all in a safe, welcoming community. At Northern, you'll find a college that's right for you, a place to belong. Your future starts here. Unleash your potential and welcome back to the Corn Palace. Quick pass up. A foul and then a dunk thrown down by Hamlin. Referees discussing what they're going to call here. I think Stevenson got hit in the face on his way up. But a foul nonetheless, and he'll go to the line. 58 seconds flat, Cole. Luke Kepsel's second free throw, so now we're going to shoot a bonus. Hamlin wanted an intentional foul, but... If Stevenson doesn't go up and dunk the ball after the whistle's called, he doesn't get hit in the face. Very in my true. Opinion. Free throw no good. So it's a nine-point game, 55 seconds to play. Howard needs a shot, and they need it fast. 
Drive, spin move, layup, good. Seven-pointer, Cole. Seven-pointer, 44 seconds, and a quick foul by Howard. You know, this is not over. You can't call it, you can't call it over yet, um, but free throws are massive here. If the free throws, I mean, one of every two, you trade a bucket here and there, seven doesn't come easily. You have to have a turnover here, or it's kind of impossible. And now Hamlin's in the double bonus. Big miss. First free throw, no good by Stevenson. So still a seven-point game. Stevenson, second free throw up, also no good, but an Ooh. offensive rebound go to the Chargers. They're going to kick it out, wait for Howard to foul, and it looks like they're not going to. Now they are. So the foul will be called. I believe that was 22, Tate and Hoyer. Yeah, well, Hoyer kind of got a, a arm around him and hooked him, and he went to the ground hard. That is his fourth team's 10 plus. Two free throws. Ryland Bodden. First one off the back iron, no good. Man, Hamlin cannot make a free throw right now. That's going to keep Howard in this game, Cole. 34 seconds, seven point game. Shot clock will not be a factor for the rest of this game. Second free throw up, also no good. And rebound finally controlled by Howard. Tipped around, 30 seconds. Long three on the way, air ball. Hamlin will have it. That's going to make it awful hard, Cole. They needed that. They needed something, that's for sure. Big press on, going to sell out for the foul. They're going to get it. So now if Hamlin can make some free throws, this game will be over. That is indeed true. you got to wonder how much longer Howard's going to go on like this, uh, trying to stay in the seven point current uh, se current seven-point lead uh, from the Chargers. So Stevenson goes back to the line to shoot some more free throws. First one up, short. They're struggling on that free throw line, but it doesn't matter. Howard's really having a tough time scoring, Cole. They just can't seem to get anything going, but it's working out for him, like you said. Stevenson's free throw. second free throw, good. That so might it do it. Eight-point ball game, 24 seconds. Still possible. Quick three, boys. But you got to make some shots. Kepsel drives in, left-handed hook shot, good. Timeout called by Howard. 30-second timeout. We're going to take it with them. We'll be back to the Corn Palace in 30 seconds. At Northern. Welcome back to the Corn Palace. Cole Larsh, Charlie Preen, along with Troy and Nathan. Heath finally showed up. Just got back from his nap, probably. There's no way he was doing anything out there. <laughs> Gave me the face of, did you really just say that? Yes, I did. Quick could've, foul called. Could have maybe got a jump ball there. It looked close. 14 seconds. And go to the other end. And a six-point ball game. Now, if both of these free throws are missed, Howard has to have a three here, or it's yep. basically you, impossible. You cannot drive down and shoot a two like they did last time. I think it might be over now. That one might be the icer. Jackson Wadsworth, first free throw good. 54-47. Second free throw on the way. That one is also good. 55-47. Ten seconds to play. Not a whole lot of chance that Howard can come back, especially if they shoot shots like that. Erickson down low. Pass over to Clawson. His layup good. And that will be the ball game. Hamlin 55. Howard 49. We're going to take a break. Come back with some stats, hopefully. And take another break, and it's Mitchell versus Campbell County. Back to the Corn Palace after this.
Hey, Hoop City Classic fans, it's Andrew Kuyper with Plains Commerce Bank. And Corey Merrick in the Mitchell area. We just wanted to say thank you for voting us the local best in mortgage and real estate loans 10 years running. And we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good luck to your favorite teams. Enjoy the game. Calling all high school seniors. Not sure what your next step is? Consider Dakota Wesleyan University's Learn and Earn program located in Pierre. Current students in the Learn and Earn program are thriving. That's because the Learn and Earn program is different. Take classes on a flexible schedule at the Capital City campus and intern with a peer area business for a paid work experience. Scholarships are available. Visit dw.edu backslash learn and earn today. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Danny Menhold Auto Group. Danny Menhold, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet. Say yes to 23 local and national lenders on hand competing for your business. Say yes to the most value for your trade with multiple appraisers bidding for it. Say yes and buy with no money down and no payments until March 2023. All credit applications accepted. Our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Danny Menhold Rapid Chevrolet. Limestone canyons, flowing waterfalls, and pristine beauty make Spearfish a sanctuary for those seeking the ultimate escape. Outdoor enthusiasts will find top-notch sport climbing, mountain biking, and UTV OHV trails. Guests are steps away from peaceful hiking trails and tranquil streams. Relax and rehash your day's adventure at one of our award-winning local breweries. Finding rest is an important part of any adventure. Lodging in Spearfish comes with a variety of choices, from cabins, B&Bs, and campgrounds to the comforts of your popular brand-name hotels. To find your unique adventure in Spearfish, go to visitspearfish.com. Calm now. Black Hills State University provides the opportunity to explore careers with more than 125 programs of study. With quality programs and passionate faculty, you can find the path to a career of your dreams. While exploring academic options, find adventure that awaits for you in the beautiful wilderness surrounding Spearfish. Get involved in one of the many clubs on campus. Learn to lead and gain the knowledge that puts you above the rest. Apply now at bhsu.edu. Said a bank is welcome back to the Corn Palace. Like you said, your final score: Hamlin defeats Howard, 55-49. Charlie, looking at the stats here, what are we seeing overall? You know, something that stands out to me: we go um, points-wise. I don't know. It, it it looks very interesting to me. I guess Hamlin was very balanced and being balanced it helps a lot and it just felt like Hamlin controlled the whole game besides a little bit in that third quarter we seen Howard come back and and kind of show us you know that they have an ability to score and and defensively I just felt like when Hamlin went into that press Howard broke it a couple times got some points off of it and then Hamlin went away from it and that's kind of when they took the game leading scores for Hamlin Tyson Stevenson had 16 points Brennan Kessler had 14 Van Metren and Boston had seven, and Issa Neuendorf had six. For Howard, they were led by Colt Kepsel with 19, Luke Kepsel with 16, Colby Clausen had five, Hoyer, Erickson, and Meyer had three for yeah. a total of 49. Yeah, and you look at the big scorer in uh, Kepsel, Colt Kepsel, he fouled out of the game, and maybe look, that, look to that to be a pivotal moment is when he fouled out of the ability of, I guess, Howard being able to score the ball. If you can't score the ball, obviously you can't win games, and I think that's when Howard started really struggling is when he fouled out. 
Final score, 55-49 from game three. We're going to take another break. When we come back, Mitchell girls and the Campbell County girls on live ticket TV. We'll be back to the Corn Palace in about six or seven minutes. It's not a place to lock up money. It's a place to set it free. What if the point of banking wasn't to bank at all, but to put your ideas to work? What if your bank asked, what if, a little more? Well, what if we told you, we do? We're American Bank and Trust, where what if meets why not? If you are ready to change what you get out of banking, start a relationship with us. What if you made the move today? You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menholt Auto Group. Denny Menholt Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks, and SUVs, imports, and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet. Farmers know crop insurance is essential for managing risk. It's also valuable for maximizing revenue. The crop insurance officers at Farm Credit Services of America have proprietary tools and expertise to deliver the personalized crop and revenue protection you need for the peace of mind you want. Nobody delivers crop insurance like this. Discover the difference by calling 800-884-FARM. Agriculture works here. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menholt Auto Group. Denny Menholt Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks, and SUVs, imports, and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet. Black Hills State University provides the opportunity to explore careers with more than 125 programs of study. With quality programs and passionate faculty, you can find the path to a career of your dreams. While exploring academic options, find adventure that awaits for you in the beautiful wilderness surrounding Spearfish. Get involved in one of the many clubs on campus. Learn to lead and gain the knowledge that puts you above the rest. Apply now at bhsu.edu. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Welcome back inside the Hoop City Classic as we get you set, not quite to the halfway mark, as it's time for game number four, which is a change of pace. As we see the short hair turn into ponytails, it's time for some girls action here at the world's only Corn Palace, where it features, well, the home team, the Mitchell Lady Colonels taking on, well, a schedule and a team unlike any other you might see across the entire United States of America. That is the Wyoming County Campbell Camels, who play such a unique schedule 
to open up. When it comes to what we see here in the state of South Dakota, it's very common to have a couple of these classics at the beginning, but it always seems to play maybe teams from the, the state of South Dakota. Don't have to travel too far. Maybe even some of them, like the Mitchell Colonels, have it in your own backyard. But for the County Campbell Camels, who come into this 4-2 and two already, they open up their first 12 games of the season all with some type of tournament, including one already in Colorado, and now one here in South Dakota. This is a trek for the Camels that gets very intense over the next few days, including kind of taking on a Mitchell team, which not a lot is known about them. That's a number one team of Class B, Viber Curly, coming up tomorrow morning and then they wrap up this kind of tournament taking on the T-Area Lady Titans. And if you don't know who the T-Area Lady Titans are, they're a team that has been phenomenal as well this year and have a lot of talent. Looking forward to these next three days in this game. County Campbell Campbell's team comes into it. Ranked number three out of the state of Wyoming and a team that comes back with a lot of experience for the past couple of years should be a doozy for game number four. We've had three games wrap up so far, including game number one where Ethan got a 67 to 64 win. Also in game that just wrapped up we saw Hamlin beat Howard 55 to 49 and in game number two of the day it was Viber Curley that got a 14 point victory over Gregory 58 to 44 again we step aside for the boys action and get into this girls action we do have plenty more boys basketball coming up including a favorite one coming up in just a little bit after this one uh, Houston from the state of Tennessee is taking on Thunder Basin from the state of Wyoming. That is coming up after this game. No Charlie Preen, no Cole Larsh, as those two are going to step aside and take a break for, for the first time today, but they'll be joining us coming up a little bit later on in the broadcast. Nathan, off to my right of me, is our producer for game number four. Today's game is also brought to you by one of the main corporate sponsors of the Hoop City Classic, and that is First Dakota National Bank. Here for you since 1872, great banking is built on trust, and trust takes time. First Dakota has proudly supported the dreams and banking needs of their customers for 150 years. They offer personal, business, and ad banking solutions for every stage of your journey, plus a friendly team of professional bankers ready to put you first. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by Northern State University. Visit Spearfish and Denny Menholt. Toyota and Hyundai. We're going to step aside and when we come back it's our starting lineups and the opening tap between County Campbell and Mitchell. That's on the way next here on Live Ticket TV. What if we said a bank isn't a place to lock up money. It's a place to set it free. What if the point of banking wasn't to bank at all but to put your ideas to work. What if your bank asked what if a little more. Well what if we told you we do. We're American Bank and Trust, where what if meets why not. If you are ready to change what you get out of banking, start a relationship with us. What if you made the move today? Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. Starting the first bank in South Dakota was the easy part, earning the confidence of local farmers, helping families account for their dreams, and securing the future for countless businesses took us a little longer. We owe it to the hard workers, big dreamers, and forward thinkers out there. Thank you for making South Dakota a great place to call home. At the world's only Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota, it's the home team. The Mitchell Lady Colonels taking on the County Campbell Camels. Before we get to our opening tap, let's 
be introduced to both teams. First, we'll begin with the home team, as they like to call themselves today, the Mitchell Lady Colonels. It'll be the same starting five that we saw in their only game of the season back on the ninth of this month, where they beat Huron in Huron by three points, 47 to 44. The starting lineup will be number 10, Delana Henke, the Six foot, or excuse me, the five nine senior forward. Number eleven, Taylor Giblin, the five six senior guard. Number twelve, Lauren Van Overshield, the five five sophomore guard. Number fourteen, Sawyer Stobner, the five nine junior forward. And number thirty two, Addie Simison, the five eight freshman guard, and also the coach's daughter for the County Campbell Camels. The starting lineup will be number two, Rami Hatley, the 5'8 senior. Number 10, Millie Riss, the 5'11 senior. Number 12, Cami Curtis, the 6'0 junior. Number 20, Sydney Stritz, the 5'9 junior. And number 21, Madison Robertson, the 5'7 senior. For the Camels, this is a team that really likes to light it up from beyond the arc. In fact, one key player you're really going to watch for will be Millie Riss of the Camels. She's that 5'2 senior guard. She is shooting 67% from beyond the arc. Again, when you look at this Camels team, and, and this just goes not for their starting five, but for the entire lineup, they are going to be outsized by not just Mitchell, but by a lot of teams here in the state of South Dakota. And that's where they do find their success of shooting from beyond the arc. And we'll be excited to see what they can do. And by the way, as you kind of look at it, uh, it's going to be slightly confusing as well as the Camels are using kind of their more traditional black or dark uniforms, I should say, that with the numbers that are outlined in gold, or I should say in gold, outlined by white, whereas the Mitchell Colonels will be in their white uniforms, but very similar colors. Now, again, County Campbell does run a traditional more blue, but the way it looks right there on that TV screen and even up from our broadcast uh, spot today, it's a little bit darker of a color. So just kind of make sure you're aware of that. If you are a Mitchell Lady Colonels fan, the Colonels, again, in their white uniforms. Plenty more games coming up yet throughout the day, including our next one that is on tap. Houston from the state of Tennessee taking on Thunder Basin from the state of Wyoming. This is game number one of three where it's going to be featuring South Dakota taking on Wyoming. After that Houston Thunder Basin game, it will be Mitchell versus Campbell County, that on the boys' side. And then over in the auxiliary gym, the Cologne girls will be taking on Thunder Basin girls of Wyoming. We won't have that coverage for you. Again, that's happening in the auxiliary gym. This game slayed to tap at, well, 1.30. Almost a half hour behind, which we kind of expected. I don't think either team was ready for the opening tap, but it's won by the Mitchell Colonels, and we are underway. Again, Troy Feasterman off to the left working the camera. We have Nathan off to our right, the producer. I'm Heath Nimke as Charlie Preen and Cole Larish have both stepped aside to take a little bit of a break as we have plenty more games going all the way. Last game slated for 9 o'clock this evening, Aberdeen. Christian taking on Laura Rural. We'll have all the coverage right here on Live Ticket TV. Campbell, or excuse me, County Campbell trying to get it into front court. Finally do as it's controlled with wrist. They kick it over to the corner far three. This one is off the mark for Robertson. Offensive rebound, put back, no good. Controlled with the Colonels. Again, the Camels, they want to shoot a lot of threes. Driving in, losing possession. That looked like it was just straight loss possession by Lauren Van Overscheld, but they say she lost it out of bounds with a deflection from a Camel defender, so it will stay with the Lady Colonels on the inbound, and now they're going to call five seconds, and it's a turnover. Not even quite a minute into this first quarter. Neither team has found success on the scoreboard yet. The press is on. Camels have to beat it. They're going to try to use the near side pass that was deflected up in the air. Camels were moving a little too quickly, not quite getting their feet set, looking for the right passes, and the Colonels, three-pointer the opposite way, off the mark. Here in transition comes Miller Riss the opposite way. The high dribble 
They kick it over to the coffin corner near side with Robertson. Back to the free throw line extended with the right-handed dribble of Curtis. Now to the far side, three-pointer, bingo! Millie Riss is able to hit it from downtown. First points for either team, and the Camels lead the Lady Colonels 3-0, 635 first quarter. Free throw line extended as they work it back to the top. Go the Colonels, but a quick turnover, and out in front trying to get to there, and almost overran the basketball, missed shot, and then ball goes out of bounds. That was Sydney Stretz, who was out there in front, had to wait the pass. She fell down after the missed shot. It hit off her foot, and she was out of bounds, so it'll be a turnover, and it'll be Mitchell Colonel's basketball. 6.23, first quarter, 3 nothing. Been fast paced, but haven't necessarily seen a lot of shots. We're already seeing Mitchell dip into their bench with a couple different players. As we mentioned, both are telling or trying to figure out uh, where their bench is going to be ultimately at. So Campbell County leads it over Mitchell, three to nothing. Mitchell have it along the near side work it to the top drive in to the block shot up off the mark but a foul is called as getting up slowly off the ground there was Sawyer for the Mitchell Lady Colonels as she is fouled and she'll head to the free throw line the foul comes against Millie Riss picking up her first personal in the first team foul first free throw this one is off the mark. So Mitchell continues to look for their first points of the ball game as Sawyer opens up 0 of 1 from the charity stripe. The second free throw, this one is good. And it's now 3 to 1 as Mitchell gets their first points of the basketball game. Again, that full court press is on. Campbell's able to beat it as they get in the front court. Shot up, foul called. And Mitchell will pick up their first team foul. And heading to the free throw line will be Cammie Curtis. She'll be shooting two. The foul comes against Addie, picking up her first personal. First free throw, nothing but nylon for Cammie Curtis. For the Campbell County Camels, leading at 4-1. 5.53 first quarter. Second free throw, this one is good. So Cammie Curtis is able to connect on them both. And they lead it 5-1. 5.53 first quarter. As now the Camels will start to make their first couple substitutions. Inbound. And we want to do a little bit of a trick play. Not going to work out. Lost it. And right back up with it. And it's the first points off the bench for the Camels. Coming courtesy of Kylie Neary, the sophomore. So quickly, the Camels now lead it 7-1. to one. Again, this is a Camels team that is ranked number three in Wyoming. And now another quick turnover from the Mitchell Colonels. Starting to grab a little bit of momentum as this game hasn't had any urban flow to it yet. But the Camel is starting to grab the momentum. And now another quick whistle called. Second team foul against the Mitchell Lady Colonels. Again, Mitchell coming in 1-0, only loss to Huron. The foul, by the way, was against Addie. Coach's daughter now picks up her second personal, and she'll have to take a spot on the bench. Quick three. This one misses everything, but underneath the collect are the Camels. Second shot missed. Camels there once again, peeling away with the basketball. Quick three. This one is good for Neary, and now a timeout for Mitchell. As Neary coming off the bench has now put up five points for the Camels, and they lead it 10 to 1 over Mitchell with 5-12 remaining in this first quarter. We're back in just a moment here on Live Ticket TV.
Well, a team that shoots just over 50% from beyond the three-point line is showing they can do that. Well, once again, they're already two of four from beyond the arc. And the Campbell County Camels lead it 10 to one over the Mitchell Lady Colonels. We're not even quite three minutes into this first quarter. Mitchell has used their first time out trying to sort things out and get their offense going. Again, a team that came in with only one game underneath their belt, and that was a few weeks ago to open up their season against Huron. And finally underneath, able to get a shot up and good. That one comes from Allison Murink, the junior forward, has the first points from the field for the Lady Colonels. And now it's 10 to three. Again, the press by the Colonels has been impressive so far, but now a foul called. And this will be the third against Mitchell. And this will go against Taylor Giblin as she picks up her first personal. 10 to three in the front court. Controlling it for the Camels as they work it now to the near side. Trying to find a little bit of space. Back to the top they go with Neary. Free throw line back out, three pointer. This one is good, but they're going to have a whistle before the shot. This will be a foul on the Camels as well against Sydney Stretz as she'll pick up her first foul, second team foul. And again, you wipe away the three point shot that was just made for the Camels. Camels will make substitutions. Three girls coming in here in just a moment. A high dribble lost by Giblin. Giving it right to the Camels inside off the glass. And an easy wide open look off the mark for Sydney. Oh, got to cash those in as we approach the halfway mark of the first quarter. Opposite way come the Colonels. Top of the arc. Inside they work it to low block. Safe from going out of bounds. Back to the corner. Back inside. Loose basketball. Somehow the Colonels pick it back up. Jumper inside the lane is good. And that is the first two points for Carson Wetch, the sophomore guard. And more points as well off the bench for the Mitchell Lady Colonels. Three-pointer the opposite way. This one off the mark. It is a modest 4-0 run that Mitchell's on. They've cut the lead down to halfway, 10-5. The Camels lead it over the Colonels and more substitutions as we see more of the starting five come out of the ball game. So far, through six games, the Camels have gone 10 to 11 deep total of playing, or five to six off their bench. Inside, breaking past two defenders, and Hadkeep gets her first two points of the ball game. One of the, I believe right now, looking at it, only starter out there, no, along with Millie Riss, the only two starters currently on the court for the Camels. 12 to five, 324 first quarter. Ball went out of bounds. It will stay with Mitchell. Carson to inbound it. Kicks it over to the corner on the inbound. Inside the lane. It's Giblin. Giblin up with the shot and gets it to fall. Giblin her first two points. It's the first points from the starting five from the field for Mitchell as well. 3.05 first quarter. Kick it back out. Wrist another three-pointer. This one leaves it short. No one boxes her out. Gets back her own rebound. Now college three. This one is off the mark for the Campbell County Camels. And then a quick travel gives it right back as that was Allison who took one too many steps there. 251 first quarter, 12 to seven. Five-point lead for Campbell County. Inbound right in front of the scorer's table. They get it to Millie Riss. Again, she was shooting 67% from beyond the three-point line coming into today's game. For the Camels, this is one of three games over the next three days they will be in. Viber Curly tomorrow morning, and then T Area tomorrow, or excuse me, on Friday morning. Driving in inside the lane, shot off the mark for Hadke. Opposite way come. Mitchell trying to work something in the lane. Pass was behind. Opposite way. Camels almost lost out of bounds. Kick it to the corner. Three-pointer. This one air ball as Riz has gone cold for the Camels. 2 4 first quarter. Starting to find a little bit more of a flow to this with 
consistent missed shots for both teams. Pass, drive with the right hand. A little bit of separation, shot now blocked away. 12 against 12 there. And that time, Cami Curtis gets the win defensively. Bounce pass inside the lane, off the glass, and good for two. And that one is Hadke, who now has four points in the ball game. 14 to 7, 93 seconds separate us from the quarter break. Pass to the elbow. Want to go over top and try to save it. Not able to do so. Lauren Van Overshield there just stepped out of bounds. And another substitution as Madison Robertson checks back into the game for the Camels. And coming out of the game, I believe that was Cami Curtis. 14-7. Campbell County has doubled up the Colonels once again. Trying to work it down the lane. Looked like my man travel there by Hadke. Back out now underneath, up through the trees. Able to knock down the shot is Sydney Struts. And a foul call. She has her first point to the ball game. All stars except for Maddie Robertson have scored for Campbell County. And again, it's an and one opportunity for Sydney. The foul comes against Brianna Kirsch, picking up her first off the bench. Again, fourth team foul. High arcing free throw. Sydney, though, gets it to fall. She's got three points in the ball game. The Camels are a perfect three of three now from the charity stripe. 16 to 7, 102 first quarter. Bit of a double team there, easily getting by is Sawyer. Underneath, kick it to the corner, swing it back opposite side. They want to get back to Sawyer, and as the pass comes in, a foul that will go against Hadke, picking up her first personal and the third team foul for the Campbell County Camels. In three games already have wrapped up, including our first one, has been the most exciting so far. That was Ethlin getting the win over McCook Central Montrose, 67 to 64. Saw a total 77 points combined in that first half. Second half, not as many, but still very, very exciting. Weinberg Curley got a nice big win over Gregory. And it seemed like Another interesting game, but always in hand there as Hamlin was able to beat Howard in game number three by a final score of 55 to 49. 40 seconds, this one stolen away. Driving in, Sawyer lets the defender go on by, and Sawyer able to get the easy two points. She now has three for the ball game, 16 to 9. Shot clock is off. Driving in, pick up the dribble, kick back out. Move it around the perimeter. Now inside once again, they look for Sydney. She's had multiple looks there and has only been able to cash it in once. Wyoming, Campbell County went so quickly, they give Mitchell an opportunity. Pass inside, a little bit of who wants it. Shot in the end was deflected away. And the Camels will not get a last second shot off. And they lead it after quarter number one, 16 to 9, over the home team, the Mitchell Lady Colonels. We'll step aside. We're back here in just a moment here on a live ticket TV. Acres Ahead is back with AgTegra Cooperative. Now is the time to secure product, lock in early season prices, and receive delayed payment terms on your agronomy inputs. Fertilizer, seed, and crop protection purchases from Acres Ahead also qualify for triple play grain premiums, diesel discounts, and feed discounts. Contact your local AgTegra agronomist to learn more on how Acres Ahead can maximize your farm's earning potential straight from the start. AgTegra Cooperative. Strong. Stable. Dependable. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menholt Auto Group. Denny Menholt Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks, and SUVs, imports, and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet. 
Campbell County got off to a quick start with that one point leading it. 10 to 1. Mitchell, after a timeout, was able to find a little bit more of their offense, but the Campbells holding to a seven point lead as they attack the basketball to our north, driving in. Quick shot up. This one's off the mark, but a quick foul. So you see it, of course, on your phone TV screen moving from right to left are the Camels. Again, Campbell County, a team that uh, supports colors in blue. But today, a little bit darker in alternate uniforms that kind of look a lot like the Mitchell Lady Colonels. So it can kind of get a little confusing out there on the court. But again, the Mitchell in white for today. By the way, the foul that was just assessed was on Delena picking up her first personal in the fifth team foul against the Colonels just nine seconds into this second quarter. Second free throw. This one is off the mark. It was Cami Curtis who was shooting free throws. So she is now three of four from the charity stripe, and she's got three points in the ballgame, 17 to nine. Colonels have dipped already four deep into their bench, moved around the perimeter, back out there with all their starting five. Three-pointer, though, is off the mark for Taylor Giblin. Loose basketball, three girls on the hardwood. Colonels walk away with it. Giblin will back all the way up, shoot the three. This one clangs off the back of the iron, rebounded by the Camels. Opposite way, now controlled with Neary. She'll shoot the three, my goodness! That was almost from WNBA range. And Kearney off the bench, or excuse me, Neary off the bench, now has eight points. Kaylee Neary, the sophomore, eight points off the bench, and she has been huge already. And quickly, Campbell County is going to go right to their bench, almost make kind of that uh, hockey change. Four girls are about to come in here. Foul, by the way, was called. It will go against Anna Castilnos as she picks up her first personal in the fourth team foul. And again, we'll see the Campbells bring out a lot of their starting five back into their uh, Rami Adkey, Millie Riss, Camry Curtis, all back out there along with Robertson. Free throw is up and good. So able to hit them both there. 20 to 11, 643, second quarter. So both teams have been able to find the spark, but for Campbell County, back out there with a majority of their starting five. If not all the starting five, I believe, nope, only one. Again, not the starting five. Quick foul against the Mitchell Colonels. Not quite for sure. Don't have one of the numbers on my roster, so I'm missing a girl currently. That's Lauren Kirchbach, who is out there for the Camels. She's the only one in the starting five that's currently on the court. Missed shot, left short. By the way, the foul that went against Mitchell was on Sawyer, picking up her first in a six-team foul. And now a whistle called. We'll have a foul that will go against... No, it'll be a timeout instead called. And we'll step aside and take the timeout with them. It's Campbell County that leads it over Mitchell 20-11. to 11. We're back in just a moment here on Live Ticket TV. Starting the first bank in South Dakota was the easy part. Earning the confidence of local farmers, helping families account for their dreams, and securing the future for countless businesses took us a little longer. We owe it to the hard workers, big dreamers, and forward thinkers out there. Thank you for making South Dakota a great place to call home. Well, a schedule unlike many that you'll see across the United States, the first 12 games all begin on the, well, tournaments for the Campbell County Camels. And coming into this Hoop City Classic, they get ready for three games all back to back to back. And this is really the 
latest game they play. Otherwise, it's less than 24 hours. They get ready for the Viber Curly Cougars as we're back in action. And, of course, for the Mitchell Lady Colonels, when you have a Hoop City Classic like this, they'll take a day off. They'll be back again on Friday. Quick transition, and this one up and good for Lauren as she has her first points off the bench for the Camels. Very, very balanced scoring that we have seen so far from the Camels. Already six different girls that have scored here in this first half. And now driving, and before the shot, a foul is called. The Camels now pick up their fifth team foul. And the foul will go against Hadke as she'll pick up her second personal. She's got four points in the ball game as well. Inbound, Mitchell. Finally gets it in as they have it with Sawyer. She loses her footing, picked up, easy little look, and this one easily off the glass and good for two for Neary as she continues her tear. She now has 10 points here in the ball game. Now pass takes a deflection on its way through. Colonels have it inside the paint, up and off the glass, and good for two, and that is Van Overshield who gets her first two points of the ball game. 24 to 13, 452 second quarter. This one has been controlled tempo wise by the Camels. And of course on the scoreboard as well, inside and this one off the glass and good for two for Cami Curtis. She now has five points in the ball game. 26 to 13, once again the Camels have doubled up the Colonels, drive in, too strong off the glass, an open look there. Quickly the opposite way. Lauren has it. Pulls up on the free throw line extended. Back out. Three-pointer off the back of the iron. Fight for the rebound. Somehow the Camels come away with it. Millie Riss throws it away. And opposite way, it's the Colonels. As they cross over the 10-second line with Sawyer. Sawyer trying to get a little bit of space. Will now hand it off to her teammate, Van Overshield. As Van Overshield makes the move, a foul is called. And it will go against Cami Curtis picking up her first personal and the sixth team foul. So both teams at six. Next foul for either will give bonus. Now the Cami Curtis and Masson Robertson will come out of the ball game. Sydney Stretz will check back in, and Alexis Remmer will check in for the Camels. Free throw line extended over to the coffin corner. Now stolen away by the Camels. As they'll use the press. Quickly going up, it's Millie Riss. She's going to attack. The defense drives in. And a foul is called as she'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. Trying to take the charge there and not able to do so was Sawyer. And Sawyer will now pick up her second personal. And again, the seventh team foul. Sawyer a big key to this offense for the Mitchell Colonels, you want her out there on the court, but already two personal fouls. It looks like she'll come out here. Free throw is off the mark for Millie Riss. Oh, they'll keep Sawyer out there. Instead, make this substitution for Taylor Giblin will come out of the ball game. Second free throw, both off the mark. That time for Millie. And she has just a three-pointer first three points of the ball game. She has not scored since. 337, second quarter. Losing the orange, the Lady Colonels. They go back and retrieve it. It's Addy. Makes her move in, up with the shot. This one is off the glass and good for two. She picked up two quick fouls in that first quarter. Wasn't featured really that much and has her first points of the ball game. 26 to 15. Mitchell trying to just chip away. Back inside to Lorne. Kick it out. Sydney, the far jumper, misses everything. Had too much oomph on that. 301. Mitchell, another possession to keep chipping away. Sawyer picks up her dribble. She wants to get it back out. She's in shouting to one of her teammates. Still has it. And now holds on to it for too long. She was shouting there at Lauren Van Overshield to get open. She wanted to make the pass to her, but couldn't. And a turnover for the Mitchell Colonels for holding on to it there too long. Substitution as Delena Henkel will be checking back in. 
and Sawyer will come out of the ball game. 26-15, 2.45, second quarter. It's Campbell County with an 11-point lead. Three-pointer, bingo! This one on the mark for Anna as she has her first points of the ball game. Seven different scores for the Campbell. And they extend it to their biggest lead of the ball game of 14. 29 to 15, 220. First half, ball poked loose, goes out of bounds. Last touch by the ladies in black. So it will stay with Mitchell as another substitution is made. As checking back into the ball game there, I believe was Allison. She has it, speaking of. Bounce pass, trying to get it to Delena. Loose basketball. Have to look like it might take a deflection off the foot. Campbell's come. Attacking the basket. Far jumper off the mark. Rebounded by Mitchell. 29-15. 1-55. Second quarter. Trying to get a little bit of space. Picks up the dribble. Working over to the near side now with it is Carson Wetch. Back to the top. Driving in. Now to the wing. Three-pointer. This one is good. Addy now has five points in the ball game. She got an open look and cashed in. Back to just an 11-point lead for the Camels. Again, they have felt comfortable throughout three-point, trying to trade blow for blow. This one's off the mark. Mitchell would love to go on a run. With 80 seconds remaining here before halftime. Don't need a big run. Just a little bit of offense to bring this one close before the halftime whistle. Drive in off the glass. Too strong. Offensive rebound, and now a foul is called. It will go against the Camels. Their seventh team foul, and this one is a shooting foul, so two free throws upcoming. The foul goes against Sydney, picking up now her second personal. Or no, excuse me. They're going to call that instead on Cami Curtis picking up her second. Free throw is up, and this one's off the mark. For Delena talking about that little run that Mitchell needs to go on. These are the shots that you need to take advantage of. We'll set down and tow the line. Second free throw. This one is up and good. So Delena has her first point of the ball game. She is one of two from the free throw line. Well, I'm seeing behind the bench right now, Thunder Basin boys in blue starting to file in to watch on this game. We will have more information on that coming up here at halftime. As Thunder Basin is going through a heartbreak at the moment and a heavy loss with their team. Shot is off the mark, rebounded by the Camels. They work it around the perimeter. Over to Sydney, to Robertson, to the wing drive baseline. Space cut off there. Hand it back over to Robertson. They want to get to the far side, stolen away. Quickly come Mitchell with Sawyer, drives in off the glass again, too strong. Mitchell's had plenty of those open looks, have not been able to capitalize. A three on one, attacking, and now the Camels can't finish off. The luck of foul called underneath. My God. Goodness, both teams have had opportunities with open looks, but have not been able to finish it off. And by the way, it's a foul actually on Campbell County. And with bonus, it means Mitchell will get a one and one upcoming. The foul that time went against Lauren, picking up her first personal. And again, the eighth team foul. All right, you bring out the twinkle fingers here. For Taylor Giblin, trying to make it, throws it up there on the one and one, not able to do so, but it's an offensive rebound. Put back is good after the first time was a miss, and Sawyer, the second opportunity, able to knock it home, and she's fouled. So the old fashioned three point play. Sawyer is one of two from the free throw line. Well, I talked about just a slight run that the Lady Colonels need to go on, and they have done exactly that to end this first half. Sawyer to try to cut it down to seven. Able to make the free throw. 
She's got six points in the ball game. A quick substitution as Sawyer is going to come out trading offense for defense with 19.5 remaining before halftime. County, excuse me, Campbell County can hold for the last second shot. Move it around to the near side with Robertson. Now to that far side, Hadkey. She drives in off the glass and good for two. The Campbell's able to strike right before the buzzer. Half court heave, nowhere close, and we go to halftime. 31 to 22. Mitchell able to find a lot more offense, including 12 points in that second quarter, but just kind of continuing on their track. Campbell County puts up 15 of their 31 in that second quarter, and they hold on to a nine-point lead as we head to halftime. We're stepping aside. When we come back, it's our first half statistics. That's on the way next here on Live Ticket TV. At Northern State University, your future starts with an affordable education that's personalized for you. Experience hands-on learning guided by world-class supportive faculty. You'll also enjoy a full campus life with opportunities to choose from numerous student activities and events, all in a safe, welcoming community. At Northern, you'll find a college that's right for you, a place to belong. Your future starts here. Unleash your potential at Northern. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Danny Menhold Auto Group. Danny Menhold Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet. Say yes to 23 local and national lenders on hand competing for your business. Say yes to the most value for your trade with multiple appraisers bidding for it. Say yes and buy with no money down and no payments until March 2023. All credit applications accepted. Our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menhol Rapid Chevrolet. Every farm is unique, but all farmers have something in common the desire to maximize their land and improve it for the next generation. You need a cooperative that offers peace of mind. Agtegra Cooperative is an ag partner that shares your values and is part of your community. From agronomy and grain operations to energy and feed, Agtegra will link your farm to the future. Agtegra Cooperative, strong, stable, dependable. We hope you are all enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menhold Auto Group. Denny Menhold Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks and SUVs, imports and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menhold Rapid Chevrolet. At Northern State University, your future starts with an affordable education that's personalized for you. Experience hands-on learning guided by world-class supportive faculty. You'll also enjoy a full campus life with opportunities to choose from numerous student activities and events, all in a safe, welcoming community. At Northern, you'll find a college that's right for you, a place to belong. Your future starts here. Unleash your potential at Northern. As we come back to the Mitchell Corn Palace, and we have our camera focused right now on the Thunder Basin of Wyoming, as they will be coming up next, taking on Houston. Uh, one of 
say some sad news that has been passed along to us. Max Sorensen of Thunder Basin has passed away yesterday. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, the Thunder Basin team, and everyone back at Thunder Basin with their heavy hearts and a tough loss that they continue to go through. Just impressive that they're able to carry on here at the Hoop City Classic, knowing that they have lost one of their members of the basketball team, as we remember Max Sorensen. 31 to 22 right now here at halftime in our first ladies game of, of the day, as right now it's the Campbell County Camels that lead over the Mitchell Lady Colonels at halftime, 31 to 22. This has been a game that has been dominated by the Camels. They've really held on to, at one point, a large lead, but Mitchell able to find sparks of their offense. Again, we have not seen a lead change here yet in this game. The largest lead for the Camels of 14 at one point with 237 remaining in this first half. And that's actually kind of when Mitchell went on a little bit of a, a modest 6-0 run to bring it back to within seven, but the Camels able to finish off with a great kind of a last second look there. Leading the way, by the way, is Kylie Neary for the Camels coming off the bench. She has 10 points. Otherwise, Cami Curtis has eight points. It's been really spread out scoring as well with four different scores for the Campbell County Camels out of their 31 points. For a team, they're shooting 12 of 30 or 40% from the field. A team that shoots just over 50% from beyond the three-point line is just shooting 4 of 11 for 36%. They are 3 of 6 from the free throw line. On the opposite side for the Mitchell Lady Colonels, they also have had very balanced scoring throughout, including seven different scores that have scored so far. Leading the way is Addie Simonson, the uh, coach's daughter, with seven points, six points for Sawyer so far. Otherwise, just minimal amounts throughout the rest of the Mitchell Lady Colonels. As a team, they are also shooting 40% from the field, but taking 10 less shots than the Camels, 8 of 20. They're just 1 of 4 from the three-point line and 5 of 8 from the charity stripe for 62%. Again, Campbell County outscored Mitchell in that first frame, 16 to 9, and outscored him in the second frame, 15 to 13 for this 9-point lead. Again, Ben Camels all the way throughout. We're going to step aside when we come back. The second half, that's moments away here on Live Ticket TV. Hey Hoop City Classic fans, it's Andrew Kuyper with Plains Commerce Bank. And Corey Merrick in the Mitchell area. We just wanted to say thank you for voting us the local best in mortgage and real estate loans 10 years running. And we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good luck to your favorite teams. Enjoy the game. With the Hoop City Classic, it's game number four of the day. Today's broadcast is brought to you by our fine sponsors, including Capital City Campus. They serve students aged 16 to 96, looking to earn a college degree, improve their professional path, or pursue lifelong learning through professional development sessions. They have partnerships with all six South Dakota public universities, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, the ed to go and incredible instructors throughout Central Pier helping out there at 
Capital City Campus. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by Farmers Union Insurance. They value what's important to you in your way of life. Whether you're a driver, homeowner, farmer, or business owner, let them show you how they can provide the protection you need. Find an agent and find out all the services they can provide at Farmers Union Insurance. Dot com. Well, as we are set and ready to go for the second half, it has been the Campbell County Camels that lead it by 9, 31 to 22. Again, other scores that have been finished today. In game number one, it was Ethan that beat McCook Central Montrose 67 to 64. Also in game number three of the day, Hamlin beat Howard 55 to 49. As you see, some other scores that are coming across the bottom of the scoreboard. But the other one we want to talk about was Viberg Hurley here at this classic. They beat Gregory 58 to 44. We'll see a lot more scores come up throughout tomorrow and also Friday as there's going to be a lot of other classics happening in Huron as well as up at the Pentagon coming up Friday and Saturday and then just makeup games now if it was a South Dakota games uh, they couldn't do makeup games because today of course is a sacred day don't play on church days but because of all the different teams traveling from out of state South Dakota teams are able to play in this Hoop City Classic. Both teams come back out with their starting five, including Delana, Taylor, Lauren Sawyer, and Addy for the Mitchell Lady Colonels. For the Campbell County, Rami, Millie, Cammy, Sydney, and Madison all out there as well. A deep three. This one rattles in and out, rebounded by Millie Riss, the senior guard who pushes tempo up court. Now driving in inside through contact, and a late whistle is finally called, but heading to the free throw line will be Hadkey, and the foul is the first for the Mitchell Colonels. Just as it started in the first quarter, they pick up a quick foul, and the foul does come against Elena. She'll pick up her second personal, and the first free throw is up and good. For Hadkey, she now has seven points in the ball game. This is her first time at the free throw line as well. The second one is off the mark. Back up to a 10-point lead. Again, if you're just tuning in, Campbell County. Biggest lead has been 14. Mitchell has never led in this game. The runner with the left hand is off the mark. Quickly the opposite way come the Campbells. It's Sydney who goes down to the low block. Kicks back the top of the key. Now driving kick back out. The Campbells can shoot the three. Finally, Millie gets that look. Rims in and out. This south rim has been unforgiving on a lot of shooters so far today. Sawyer attacks it end to end and she'll bank it off the glass and good for two. She now has eight points in the ball game. She is the leading scorer for the Colonels. Campbell County a quick shot the opposite way not able to cash in again quickly Sawyer going to go from end to end. She just attacks the defender of Millie draws the foul and she'll head to the charity stripe the foul again against Millie Riss picking up now her second personal and the first team foul Sawyer so far in the ball game is two of four free throw is up make that two of five now so far today again Houston taking on Thunder Basin again Houston, Tennessee, that is, coming from Germantown, Tennessee, is where that school resides out of. So both free throws off the mark. Eight-point lead for the Camels. Good opportunity there for Mitchell, but now another quick turnover. As Campbell County moving a lot quicker here in this third quarter, but can't keep possession of the ball, it seems like, for very long. And now an air ball will go out of bounds. I'll talk about the Corn Palace in game number one just past 9 o'clock this morning. Wasn't really uh, too many fans here in the house, but it certainly has gotten busier and busier here at the Corn Palace. Now, can't necessarily say that it's one team or the other, just kind of a mixture of a whole bunch of different colors. They're in the seats right in front of us from where we're at in our broadcast booth. Millie at the free throw line, back out. Now work it down inside the lane shot was deflected 
The Camels come away with it after the ball was loose there for a moment. And now a three-pointer from Lauren off the bench. This one is off the mark. Still an eight-point lead for the Camels. Sawyer chilled behind the back. She's trying to do it herself. She just continues to attack the defense and draws another foul. Now the second team foul on the Camels, and it will be the first that will go against Kaylee Neary. Neary, the leading scorer, also off the bench with 10 points for the Camels in that first half. She has yet to score here in the third quarter. Controlling it, Van Overshield. She loses it out of bounds. They say it was last touched off of the Camels. So if you're Campbell County, what's the strategy after the basketball game here? Do you stick around, watch some more, or do you quickly make the trip over to Sioux Falls? Well, they'll be back in action coming up early tomorrow morning. Shot rims in and out, and this one is going to be rebounded by the Camels. Camels then will have to be back here at the Corn Palace on Friday as they'll be playing seven, eight, and nine games on their schedule in three days. Drive in, contact made, no foul call, gets back thrown, rebound, missed shot once again, and just Kami Curtis could not finish it off. And now the double team underneath the hoop almost worked out, but the Colonels are able to break the pressure. They're still waiting for everyone to come back into play. Sawyer finally gets it. She gets tripped up, no foul called, and now a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the way of the Camels, and it will be a turnover. Sawyer is slow to get back up as she banged her knee going down hard on the hardwood there. And again, finally getting this sorted out, Camel basketball. Really? No flow to this. A point? For the Camels here in this third quarter, two points for Mitchell. And we're close to almost the halfway mark of this third quarter. Again, it really has that uh, same sequence feel that the first quarter did. A little very choppy, fouls called, missed shots here and there. And now, before we get the pass underneath and a made bucket, whistle is called, three-second violation. So we'll give it right back to the Lady Colonels. 32 to 24, 435, third quarter. If you've been with us throughout, well, we appreciate it. If you haven't, I don't think we're ever going to quite get the game that we saw. Unofficially, but we're almost positive a record had to be broken in that first game today of combined points in the first half, 77, including McCook Central Montrose putting up 43 points in that first half. Pass inside, deflection on its way through, but Allison Mirink finally comes away with it, able to get the two points. She now has four points in the ball game, her first point since the first quarter, 32-26. Deep three, bingo! This one is good. My goodness, she continues her tear. Kaylee Neary off the bench. She has now gotten a three-pointer in every single quarter. She's got 13 for the ball game. And now, Camels are pushing tempo, a three on one, and again, can't finish it. The third time today, they have had that three on one break every single time. They have walked away with no points from the field. In fact, the other two have either been a turnover or a foul on the Camels. The first time they get the foul against them, and the free throw is off the mark for Lauren. So we'll see a couple substitutions, or maybe just one. Just one, as it will be Anna who will check back into the ball game. All right, Camels, let's get a point here on a three-on-one break. Again, three different times we've seen it, yet to get a single point from it. That's what really separates you, at least here in the state of South Dakota, from good teams to teams that make a state tournament. And the free throw is good for Lauren. She is now one of two from the free throw line. Three points in the ball game. 36-26, 3-35, third quarter. Again, just five points so far for the Camels here in this third quarter. Just four points for Mitchell. Another turnover. Give it back to the Camels. This is 
I mean, opportunities just to either really chip away, get this back to a one possession game, or even blow this one wide open. And neither team has done that. Three-pointer for Anna. This one left short, taking some deflections around there. And Mitchell comes with the basketball with Sawyer. Again, she'll attack, and she'll easily slap it off the glass. Sawyer now 10 points for her in the ball game. First Colonel to hit double figures. 36-28. Pass inside was ahead of Lauren. Loose basketball. Last touch that time they say by the Camels. And it will be Colonel basketball. And now a timeout is going to be called from Campbell County. We'll step aside and take the timeout with them. We're back in 60 seconds here on Live Ticket TV. Calling all high school seniors. Not sure what your next step is? Consider Dakota Wesleyan University's Learn and Earn program located in Pierre. Current students in the Learn and Earn program are thriving. That's because the Learn and Earn program is different. Take classes on a flexible schedule at the Capital City campus and intern with a Pierre area business for a paid work experience. Scholarships are available. Visit dw.edu backslash learn and earn today. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menhold Auto Group. Denny Menhold, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet. Say yes to 23 local and national lenders on hand competing for your business. Say yes to the most value for your trade with multiple appraisers bidding for it. Say yes and buy with no money down and no payments until March 2023. All credit applications accepted. Our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menhold Rapid Chevrolet. At the world's only Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota, it's 36 to 28 with 250 left here in this third quarter. I believe the Corn Palace is famous for their corn balls. I say I believe because that's something that's always a tradition. A lot of broadcasters like to do. Troy Feasterman off to my left here, running the camera. Troy, I've never had a corn ball, and it's because uh, I'm going to get in trouble by saying this. I hate popcorn. Inbound is stolen away by the Camels. I'll finish that thought here in just a moment to let my... I need some space here to make sure I don't get in too much trouble. It's controlled with Riss. Inside to Lorne. Lorne's going to attack the bucket. Turn around. Jumper gets this one to go. It's because it always gets stuck in my teeth. And I hate constantly having to pick the hauls out of my teeth. That's the only reason I hate popcorn. It's not the flavor, it's not the taste, it's not the texture. It's just strictly getting stuck in my teeth and after a while you just have had enough, all right? 38-28, 2.25, third quarter. Ball out of bounds. It will stay with Mitchell along the baseline. We will wait for Millie to tie her shoe underneath the hoop. Ready to go once again. Inbound, looking for somebody. They're going to go deep to Sawyer. Sawyer in the lane. Kick it around. Jumper, this one too strong. Went off the back of the head of Robertson. And the Colonels somehow get it back. Three-pointer. This one is off the mark. Fight for the rebound. Comes away with the Camels. Up to a 10-point lead. I've never had bigger lead than at 14. Millie, she'll shoot the three. Bingo! Millie Riss has her first points since she got the game started with a three-pointer. And now trying to inbound, five-second call, turnover by Mitchell. Well, they say when it rains, it pours. Back-to-back three-pointers for the Camels. And now a turnover. Campbell County can really open this one up as they lead it by 13. Or get over to the corner, drive in. Jumper off the mark for Robertson. Fight for the rebound, and they're going to say a foul call, I believe, on Millie Riss. She'll pick up her third personal and the fourth team foul. And it'll be Colonel Basketball as they get it on the inbound. Sawyer. Not really a whole lot of tempo. Run by the Colonels, kind of just taking their time, getting in the front court, set up the offense. Time, yes, starting to get against them. With nine and a half remaining in this ball game, trailing by 13. That's still a quarter to go, but the way Mitchell's offense have moved so far, it hasn't been sparkling. 
Jumper inside, open look that time off the mark for Matty Kemp. Opposite way, the Camels. Now on the corner, near side. Driving, looked like the foot might have gone out of bounds, throwing it away anyways. There you go. Hadkey with the turnover for Campbell County. 41-28. Again, next game coming up as we cross over the threshold of the halfway point will be Houston from the state of Tennessee taking on Thunder Basin out of the state of Wyoming. We'll get back with our broadcast team as well. Cole Larsh, Charlie Preen as they took this game off to get themselves a little bit of a break. I'm guessing with those two they found some food as well. Pass deflected, stolen away. The other two that are going to be hungry, I guess three, three guys up here that probably haven't ate yet. Nathan, our producer. Troy, our cameraman. I'm Heath Nimke, which I had time to eat. I don't know why I didn't. I have no good excuse. Other games coming up yet throughout the day do include Cologne taking on Thunder Basin in girls' action. That will be happening, though, in the auxiliary gym off to our left. We will not have coverage of that. Otherwise, at 6 o'clock, Wabe Summit takes on Canastota. Bridgewater Emory takes on White River. That one's going to be an exciting game. And then Aberdeen Christian and Lower Brule, two ranked teams to put off the nightcap. Now, I don't know if they'll try to shorten up this time either as another jumper is good up to a 14-point lead. This now matches the biggest lead that Campbell County has had. I was talking about uh, time here as we have certainly fallen off the pace. And again, if you're expecting Houston, Tennessee, or even Thunder Basin game to get started at 3 o'clock, yeah, nowhere close going to happen. Drive in, shot, no good. Foul called, and it will be two free throws upcoming. And again, uh, not quite for sure how time is going to work. And that's what it gets me a little thrown off as we do have the auxiliary gym to use at this time. We could go through warm-ups and just transition in between teams. That seems like it's reasonable, but so far they have put up 15 minutes in between games for a warm-up session, which is par of course. But, I mean, you'd like to keep things on track as much as possible. And maybe that's just the broadcaster and me that's complaining as we're, we're going to be here all night long, it seems like. I guess if we're here till midnight and that last game tips off then, we will be here. Both free throws were good there from Van Overshield. It's a 12-point lead. Quick turnover. Half-court heave from Sawyer was on the mark but just doesn't sink through. And that is the end of quarter number three. We found offense late in that quarter. Took a while. But all Campbell County did was make it from a nine-point lead now up to a 12-point lead. The fourth and final frame comes up here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV. Limestone canyons, flowing waterfalls, and pristine beauty make Spearfish a sanctuary for those seeking the ultimate escape. Outdoor enthusiasts will find top-notch sport climbing, mountain biking, and UTV OHV trails. Guests are steps away from peaceful hiking trails and tranquil streams. Relax and rehash your day's adventure at one of our award-winning local breweries. Finding rest is an important part of any adventure. Lodging in Spearfish comes with a variety of choices, from cabins, B&Bs, and campgrounds to the comforts of your popular brand-name hotels. To find your unique adventure in Spearfish, go to visitspearfish.com. Calm now. Back. In Mitchell, South Dakota for the Hoop City Classic. Great to have you along here on this Wednesday afternoon. Happy holidays and happy new year as that quickly approaches. I hope you had yourself a wonderful holiday season so far. Coming on the heels of Christmas just a few days ago and got everything that you could have ever wanted from Santa Claus. Myself did not quite include that. You know what? Sometimes I haven't always been the best in life. But that's okay. Still enjoyed the holidays back with my family. And now all the way in Mitchell, South Dakota. 
about five hours from where I originate from. Mitchell will open up with the basketball. A shot that looked like it almost had a deflection on its way through. We do have a Lady Colonel that's getting up slow to action. That is Taylor Giblin. And she is back there and running up and down the court. Sawyer has it for Mitchell. Again, a 12-point lead, 7-25, fourth quarter. Mitchell really needs to find their spark on offense. Campbell County just looking to continue to play great defense and finish off this game again. One of three coming up for them. It's going to be extremely tough for Campbell County along the way. Uh, next game comes up right away at 9 o'clock tomorrow. The Sanford Pentagon taking on the Viberg Hurley girls, and then they get ready to wrap it all up. So they'll also play at 8.30 on Friday against the T-Area girls. So two teams that are either ranked inside the top five or receiving votes coming up for Campbell County along the way. Mitchell trying to make a comeback as they trail by 12 here in this fourth quarter. 10 seconds on the shot clock, shot up. This one left short there by Addy. Campbell's quickly the opposite way, off the glass and good for two. Kaylee Neary, how about this? 17 points for her, but what's more impressive, coming off the bench, she has done it for the Camels. 44 to 30, again, matching their biggest lead of 14 here in the ball game. Drive in, shot deflected from behind. Taylor Gibbon gets back the loose basketball for Mitchell. 12 seconds there on the shot clock. Over to Sawyer. Sawyer tries to drive in, down to the block, turnaround jumper. This one misses everything. Two and one. Shot clock violation, they call it, before the shot was able to be thrown off by Giblin. So it will be a turnover, 44 to 30. As coming up into the front court, go the Camels. Now down to the block, this one up and good, wide open there was Cammie Curtis. She's got seven points for the ball game, 46 to 30. Now the biggest lead for the Camels here this afternoon, driving in foul that will go against Sydney, picking up her second personal in the sixth team foul, or excuse me, seventh team foul, so we will have bonus upcoming. Bonus will be shooting Addy a one and one. She's got five points here in the ball game. First free throw on the one and one is up and good. So she'll get a second opportunity here. Trying to cut a little bit into this lead. Free throw is up and this one is off the mark. And now a put back and count the shot and a foul. So back to back possessions with fouls against the Camels. And now Addy has another opportunity here. And a couple of substitutions for Mitchell, three. In there for the Camels. And we await a tied shoe here. 46 to 33, even with these and one opportunities for Mitchell. It's still a far stretch here at the moment. Free throw is up and this one is off the mark, but another offensive rebound and Sawyer is able to cash it in. She's got 12 points for the ball game. Well, just miss the free throws and get the offensive rebound. Seems to be working and now trying to cut off the pass. Sawyer will commit the crime, her third personal, and the fourth team foul, 46-35. 11-point lead for the Camels, 5-20. And rolling here in this foul frame. Thought about shooting three, working around the perimeter. To the near side they go with Delaney 
Banminster. And up with the shot, and that one is good for Anna. She now has five points here in the basketball game. 48-35, quickly opposite way, pass deflected and stolen away inside the lane. Then a reach in from behind, foul called against Allison in the Mitchell Colonels. Allison picks up her first personal and the fifth team foul. 48-35. Across the timeline, Millie has it. Back to the top, they work it with her. Want to get it down inside the perimeter to Anna. She dribbles it back out and she couldn't find any space. Interesting note here as well, as Campbell County has used all their girls that have dressed here today. Deep three, this one is off the mark. You usually only say that when the game is such a blowout that everyone gets to play, but a steady rotation today for the Campbell County Camels. Three-pointer near wing off the mark. Loose basketball is stolen away there by Millie Riss. Millie still has it. Free throw line back out. Three-pointer. This one off the mark. Offensive rebound back up. Deflection out of bounds. Last touched by the Colonels. It looks like Sawyer went down to her knees for a moment there. Now she's going to come out of the basketball game as Taylor Giblin will check back in. 48-35, 3.55, fourth quarter. Three-pointer, off the mark, offensive rebound. Millie Riss tried to go back up with it. She could not, and then a foul called as the basketball went loose over to the near sideline, and the foul, they say, will go against the Camels. It's now their ninth team foul, which is bonus and a 1-1 one one upcoming. And the foul, by the way, was against Millie Riss, so picking up her fourth. And again, she's got six points here in the ball game. Free throws upcoming will be Allison to shoot the free throws. She'll toe the line for her first one. Again, for Mitchell, the girls, they will play again coming up back up here in the Corn Palace. That is coming up at 7 o'clock on Friday as they will take on Thunder Basin. First free throw was good for Allison. Allison now has five points in the ball game. Again, spread out scoring for Mitchell. But not enough of scoring in general. Both free throws are good. 11-point game, certainly not over with yet, but Mitchell needs to put together a strong run and some defense along the way. Foul called as they were able to get down to Lauren at the far block there. She's fouled and will shoot two. The foul comes against Sawyer, picking up her fourth. Been a big key to this offense Sawyer has. Only one, in fact, in double figures so far today for the Lady Colonels of 12 points. Charlie Preen, Cole Larsh coming up once again for our next game. Again, if you are tuned in, looking for that right now for Houston and Thunder Basin. Game's supposed to start at 3 o'clock. That will be coming up after the conclusion of this one. 49-37, and as we understand it, it will still be a 15-minute running clock. So things will certainly fall way behind schedule coming up here throughout the rest of the afternoon. And this one starting to take even more time. The foul against the Camels. That's now double bonus. It'll be Heyrich to shoot two here. First free throw. This one is up and good. So Myrick now has seven points in the ball game. All three of her points in this fourth quarter have come from the charity stripe. 49-38, free throw is up and good. And again, still a 10-point lead here for the Camels, but that's still not quite safe. Mitchell is applying the pressure. 
Neary the backcourt. They get it up to Robertson. And now another quick foul. This is going to be team foul number seven. So bonus the rest of the way for the Camels. And about the last two minutes of game time, that's kind of what seems as this theme has been recently. It's just foul after foul. And also for the fourth time today, I should say fourth time in this game, we'll stop action for Tai Chu. Get that figured out. One and one. Upcoming free throw is up and good. So we'll have another free throw. The free throw good by Kami Curtis right now who is at the line. She now has eight points in the ball game. Make it nine with back-to-back -back free throws. 51-39, 12-point game. Addy Simonson has it. Using the left-handed dribble. Trying to get a screen. Drives in. Just has her pocket picked. Quickly the opposite way. Camels off the glass and good for two. That's Hadkey who now has 10 points here this afternoon. 53-39. to Just when it seemed like Mitchell might be able to make a late comeback. It's back up to a 14-point lead. Missed runner from Sawyer. And the Camels come away with the basketball. They quickly press tempo. Three-pointer, Robertson. This one is off the mark. Rebounded by the Lady Colonels. 53-39, 2-17. Fourth quarter. This one doesn't have a fork in it yet. But time bleeding away for the Lady Colonels if they want to do anything about it. Loose basketball, another turnover. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back turnovers for Mitchell. And now, finally getting into the front court, Neary. Campbell's still working quickly. Three-pointer, bingo, for Anna. She now has eight points in the ball game. 56-39, 17-point lead is now the biggest lead the Camels have had of the basketball game. Prior to, it was 16 points halfway through the third quarter. Drive in, shot misses everything. 11 seconds on the shot clock, shot back up, hit off the top of the backboard, and now a travel called. Should have been out of bounds, but that's okay. Remember, top top of the top of the backboard there it is not it's not in bounds. But it will stay with Mitchell, 56-39, 119 fourth quarter. Deep three for Giblin, misses everything. They try to save it, ball still loose, being poked around, goes out of bounds. Camel basketball. Today's basketball game, by the way, is brought to you by our sponsors, including Farmers Union Insurance, Sanford Sports, and the Youth Athletic Foundation. 70 seconds remaining in this ball game. Three-pointer foul against Giblin as shooting the three-pointer there was Patience Smith, and she'll shoot three. 56-39. So Patience looking to get her first points of the ball game. Free throw is up, and this one is off the mark. And again, I've been questioning myself. Would we see 15 on the clock after this one? I feel like the answer is going to be yes. With right now Thunder Basin currently not going through warm-ups as we see them over in the far corner. If you're watching on your phone or on the TV, right up there in the top right. Which again, adding that kind of time just extends things back out longer and longer for the day of Games getting off track. 57 to 39. Can't always promise that. Now, again, we have the auxiliary gym here at the Corn Palace. We'll be at the Pentagon tomorrow. I believe there is. Is it uh, six? Or it nine nowadays? Good lord. Seem like they add more and more courts. I remember like what a few years ago. I think there's four in there or so. And now that's all they do. 
They have the main court right there, and then everything around it, just kind of in the out walls there, are added more courts. Injury currently on the court, as that is Giblin, that is down. Again, next games coming up include Houston, Tennessee taking on Thunder Basin. And then we'll have Mitchell taking on Campbell County and boys action. Cologne girls will be taking on Thunder Basin girls over in the Armory. That's coming up at 5.30. That will be on time. And then Wabe Summit will take on Canastota. Scheduled for 6 o'clock. Bridgewater Emory taking on White River. Aberdeen Christian and Lower Brule will match up in our final game of the day. And some great games coming up tomorrow, including some new teams as well into this tournament. As we're kind of hitting that point, we'll see a few teams start to repeat here for the Hoop City Classic. Taylor gets up, and she goes over to the first seat she can find. Still looking down there at her right leg. Driving in, picking up the dribble. Now pass, shot off the mark. Rebounded by the Camels. And 14 seconds separate the shot clock from the game clock. 57 to 39. Well, the Camels led throughout this game, never surrendered the lead. And they're going to advance to 5-2 on the season. Next game again comes up tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock versus number one in Class B. Going to be interesting on the size of that game. Shot way off the mark. Three seconds to... One shot clock violation there. Oh, they're going to count the bucket. Wow. Count the bucket. 59-39. 20 point lead. Sawyer quickly the opposite way. Shot is off the mark. Rebounded by Sydney. And the Camels can dribble this one out. Campbell County gets the win over Mitchell by a final score 59 to 39. Mitchell drops to one and one on their season. Again, Campbell County, they advance to five and two with their next game coming up at nine o'clock tomorrow morning at the Sanford Pentagon. We'll have all the coverage right here on Live Ticket TV. So they'll put 15 minutes up here on the clock. They'll go through warm-ups and we'll bring you Houston versus Thunder Basin. Also take a look back at the final game numbers. Oh, the correction here. They're going to put up just 10 minutes now. So they're going to try to move things along. Well, we're going to get right into our pregame. That's coming up here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV for Houston and Thunder Basin. That is on the way next. Black Hills State University provides the opportunity to explore careers with more than 125 programs of study. With quality programs and passionate faculty, you can find the path to a career of your dreams. While exploring academic options, find adventure that awaits for you in the beautiful wilderness surrounding Spearfish. Get involved in one of the many clubs on campus. Learn to lead and gain the knowledge that puts you above the rest. Apply now at bhsu.edu. Got the final game score, 59 to 39, as we get you ready for game number two. Let's check back in with Cole Larsh as we have a full team of broadcasters, as we have a coach's interview. Cole, who do you have down there on the sidelines? Thanks, guys. I got Houston's head coach, Rob Sabo, here. And obviously, Rob, 
you made the long trip. How was it? Fort Paris, a thousand miles, 14 hours driving. How'd you guys survive it? Uh, we get up really early in the morning and uh, just played the elements and got up here and just, you know, we, we stress toughness and that's just another way to, to practice that. And how long have you guys been here? Have you been able to watch a couple of games earlier today? Uh, no, we just rolled in at the beginning of that last girls game and was able to watch it. It's a beautiful venue. It's the first time I've ever been here. This is awesome. We are at the Hoop City Classic last year. Uh, I was not the head coach here last year, so. How special is it, you know, Maverick Miller, all of his connections with Mitchell, you know, Mike and his brother Mason, they've been a part of this Hoop City Classic. It was the Mike Miller Classic yep. earlier. How important is it for him and your team to be, able to, become, to, to be able to come back here in the Corn Palace and the Pentagon every year and play? Well, I just got to thank for Maverick and then Mason before him. Uh, it's got to be really special to be able to come into the gym where his dad did all these special things and they get a chance to play here in front of the hometown crowd. Uh, for the program as a whole, it's just a neat experience. And then just having guys like Maverick that bring people like Mike around and, and the other people that he knows just, just enhances our uh, program back in Memphis. Well, Coach, best of luck today. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Heath, head coach Rob Sabo of Houston. Thank you, Cole Larsh, as again catching up with Rob there, has given us a little bit of time right before we get this one tapped and underway between Houston and Thunder Basin. Uh, Charlie, let's ask the obvious question. Uh, how, how do you make comparison with two teams that, well, ultimately you're never going to see each other. This is a special occasion. It just happens to be this way. How do you even prepare for something like this? Honestly, I don't think you do, Heath. You come into this game and you want to play your best game. You, you come in and you do what you can, and I'll tell you what, these are two exciting teams and kind of not sure what both of them are going to bring to the table. Um, you know, you talked about it uh, earlier. Uh, to me personally, a 2-6 and six team um, in uh, Houston, but I just I feel like they're going to show us something special today here in Mitchell. Uh, and then we have to bring up, of course, uh, this is maybe the elephant in the room, Maverick Miller, a uh, dynamic player of himself. And he gets to sit there and, and kind of watch where his dad's banner is. I mean, at one point he will be attacking the North Hoop. And, and just off to the right of that, you can see Miller, 13. His dad, amazing career at the NBA level, also of course at the college level, now back as an assistant coach with Memphis. Do you get caught up in that as a player yourself, seeing what your dad kind of, you know, maybe a, a tradition he built here, or is this just another basketball game? You know, for him, I think it's some of both. I, you have to be able to balance um, what you see, what you hear. Some of it's going to be in your head because you you know, you're always going to have it in the back of your head that you want to be, you know, better than your dad. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know how it is. And so you want to be the best you can be, but at the same time, you always got it in the back of your mind. And, and there's no way that's not in the back of Maverick's mind um, right now and throughout these next three days, or next two days, excuse me. But I'll tell you what, he uh, he's going to be thinking of it, Heath. He will. And especially when he uh, attacks that North basket, like you said, he'll see it on the wall. And it, it's, it's in big letters. It says Mike Miller 13. And it'll be uh, something for Maverick to try to get to, if you will. On the opposite side, and I'll draw your attention to it as right now Thunder Basin is going through their warm-ups. Uh, quick look at all these players running around. You'll notice this is warm-up jerseys unlike any other. Currently all with a, a number three. And this is not a, a tactic they're trying to run. They're trying to maybe throw somebody off. This is just in loving memory as... Max Sorensen has passed away unexpectedly. Uh, member of this Thunder Basin basketball team uh, just passed away day after Christmas. So very heavy hearts, Thunder Basin, making this trip here to Mitchell, South Dakota to participate in the Hoop City Classic. So they have kind of their own distraction, their own loss that they are going through with this time. We're going to step aside when we come back. It's our starting lineups for both Houston and for Thunder Basin. That is all on the way next here on Live Ticket TV. What if we said a bank isn't a place to lock up money? It's a place to set it free. What if the point of banking wasn't to bank at all, but to put your ideas to work? What if your bank asked, what if, a little more? Well, what if we told you we do? 
We're American Bank and Trust, where what if meets why not. If you're ready to change what you get out of banking, start a relationship with us. What if you made the move today? You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menhall Auto Group. Denny Menhall Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks and SUVs, imports and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menhall Rapid Chevrolet. Farmers know crop insurance is essential for managing risk. It's also valuable for maximizing revenue. The crop insurance officers at Farm Credit Services of America have proprietary tools and expertise to deliver the personalized crop and revenue protection you need for the peace of mind you want. Nobody delivers crop insurance like this. Discover the difference by calling 800-884-FARM. Agriculture works here. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menhall Auto Group. Denny Menhall Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks and SUVs, imports and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menhall Rapid Chevrolet. Back here at the world's only Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota. It's great to have you along as we continue to truck right along here at the Hoop City Classic. I'm Heath Nimke, joined with my broadcast partner off to my left, Charlie Preen, and our sideline reporter Cole Larshu is back. And again, before we get this game started underway, we are going to have a moment of silence as again, Thunder Basin is going currently through a heavy heart with their loss of Max Sorensen, who passed away unexpectedly just the day after Christmas. Our thoughts and prayers here at the Live Ticket TV family go out to the family of the Sorensons and all to the Thunder Basin student faculty and also everyone who is a fan of the Bolts as we take a moment of silence. Heavy hearts as Thunder Basin has made the trip just the day after Christmas, losing Max Sorensen, number three, for the Thunder Basin Bolts. Well, let's send it back over here to Charlie. Charlie, we get a look at our starting five. Who is the key players and who are we watching for today? You know, I'll tell you what, we're going to start with Houston, and they're going to bring some solid firepower uh, to this floor today. Maverick Miller, number three, we talked about on the 6'5 senior guard, going to be a huge player for Houston. Brock Weiss, number, where's number 10? The 6'11 senior forward. Cameron Clark, the 6'7 senior guard, where's number 11? Ethan Phillips, the six foot senior guard, he wears 23. MJ, or excuse me, DJ Miller wears number 55, the 5'11 sophomore guard. will round out the starting five for Houston. Heading to Thunder Basin, number two, Caden Laframbozzi, the 6'5", senior guard, number 11, Colton Vetter, the senior six-foot guard, number 21, Caleb Howell, the 5'10", senior guard, number 25, Bodie Williams, the 6'3", junior guard, and number 31, Quade Simmons, the 6'3", senior forward, rounds out the starting five for Thunder Basin. Well, great to have you along here for the Hoop City Classic as we have had some fun so far today. 
And now it's time to continue to roll right along as it has been one game after another. They did shorten up the clock as well to just 10 minutes of warm-up time to kind of get us back on track at least a little bit. We're, we're still a half, off, half hour off of track, but should be exciting for this game between Thunder Basin and Houston. Again, both teams have struggled, and you take a look at the record so far and what we have seen from this tournament. We have seen a lot of teams either with no losses before today or, or just ranked inside the top five with a couple of losses. This is the opposite. Again, Houston Mustangs coming into this two and six overall. But again, you talk about the competition that these teams see. Uh, there can be no comparison from the state of Tennessee to the state of Wyoming when it comes to high school hoops and what you are going to see. And it's going to be interesting for us up here in the broadcast booth as well as Brock Weiss goes up against the Thunder Basin bolts and the tap is won by the bolts but i was mentioning it charlie it's going to be hard to see with the numbers that are it is in all white outlined by black for the mustangs going to be hard to see that and even for the bolts they have their all black uniforms numbers that are in dark blue so uh, i hope your eyesight is good for this game as both teams having their opening opportunities Thunder Basin not able to get anything. Moving around the perimeter. Kind of a look here for Miller. Trying to get a screen. Now throw it down inside. Loose basketball is going to be picked up by DJ. Passed along but stolen away. Quickly the opposite way goes Thunder Basin. Wanting to go up with this shot was Caden lost it out of bounds and a turnover. Yeah, Houston wanted to go down low to Vice kind of right away to establish the inside game. Inside work, inside out possibly. Just couldn't quite get it and a turnover resulted. So both teams have had kind of a couple opening turnovers. Certainly fast pace for the crowd that's been on hand watching just girls basketball. Of course, always a little bit more of a tempo, but then two teams that we don't ever get to see here at the Corn Palace. Three-pointer deep from Miller is off the mark. And Coach Rob of Houston even got to mention it in our pregame interview how unique of a facility this was had never been here before of course Mike Miller was a part of the coaching staff last year with this but a little bit new coaching staff this year going into the season for the Houston Mustangs foul by the way first one called of the day win against Houston and against Clark as well again first team foul underneath and this one slapped off the glass and good that was Simmons and it's the first points of the ball game for Thunder Basin yeah you know Thunder Basin moved the ball well or that ball well there and just kind of came up with an easy shot a high percentage shot and it went well for him trying to get it inside the lane and a foul called as a big body goes tumbling down that time a vice and the foul will go against Thunder Basin yeah, you know, Vice, I, th I think, is going to play a key role here as, long, as well as Miller in the, uh, the field goal game. But I'll tell you what, these two teams look pretty good so far. 2-0 Thunder Basin with that lead over Houston. Trying to back his way in. Vice jumper, nothing but nylon. First points for Houston. Yeah, Vice does a pretty good job down there creating space for himself. He's kind of got a mismatch. And now another quick turnover. Again, quick tempo. Opposite way comes Houston. Miller over to the coffin corner. Now driving baseline. Last second handoff to Vice. And Vice can't get the easy look. You can almost slam dunk that if you're Vice. And again, not able to finish off the easy finger roll. We're knotted up at two apiece. 425 first quarter. Inside the lane and try to take the charge. Foul call that will go against Houston. Yeah, Vice has a seven inch uh, advantage over his um, defender, Colton Vetter, who was on him earlier down low. And by the way, the foul this time goes against Phillips, picking up his first personal in the second team foul. Now they're saying it was a shooting foul, so heading to the free throw line will be Colton Vetter for the first time today, also looking for his first points. First free throw is up. Hit off that back of the iron and falls through. And back to a lead. Thunder Basin 3-2, 5-23 first quarter. 
Second free throw. This one is off the mark. Nathan, our producer. Troy, our cameraman. Cole Larcher, sideline reporter. Charlie Preen, color analysis. I'm Heath Nimke. Three-pointer from Miller. No, excuse me. That'd be 23, Ethan Phillips Ethan in the corner. Ethan Phillips gets his first points. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie supporting the binoculars as well. And now a long two answered back this time by Simmons. His first points of the ball game. Or did they count that a three? They did, didn't they? I believe they did, yes. So it was a three-pointer. I'm sorry, and that was Williams who came away with the three-pointer. And now another quick bucket as this one's two on a Howell. So quick, back and forth action. And now Thunder Basin up to a three-point lead, eight to five. You see Thunder Basin taking advantage of these quick quick shots, and it's really helping them um, so far, breaking down this defense of Houston. And DJ Miller answers back with a three-pointer of his own. 8-8 eight, eight, as both teams starting to trade buckets, kind of like we saw in game number one, Charlie. Three-pointer, this one off the mark. It will go to Vice, quickly up to DJ. DJ is going to attack the lane, off-balance shot, and he is fouled. And they will count it before the shot, they say. We'll see Colton Vetter losing a shoe there. His right shoe kind of fell off there, so he didn't put that quick back on and... Well, the substitution. And Vetter was also the one that picked up the foul. Number 24, Josh Cla Klassen will check in. DJ, another three-pointer for him. This misses everything, but able to get the ball back up and good. And now Houston takes back the lead. That was Phillips, who now has five points in the ball game. I believe that was Clark. Oh, I'm Not sorry. Sure. You're all good. Again, the numbers of identical colors <laughs> throw me off just a tad bit. They're clean jerseys, don't get me wrong, but they're rather difficult to see from a ways away. I was going to say, where we have our spot in the broadcast booth, it is not courtside. We are completely above, uh, probably about the farthest way you can get away, honestly, from the action. Not a complaint, it's just, again, when colors that match each other make it extremely hard for us to see. Now another foul that will go against Thunder Basin. Third team foul. And it will be the first one that is called on Clausen, who just checked in. Drive in. Miller able to use the right hand and good for two. Maverick Miller, his first two points of the ball game. And now all five starters have scored for Houston. They're up to a four-point lead, their biggest. And quickly answering the opposite way is Caden, and he has his first two points. Caden had a really nice finish there. His his roll helped him a lot and good good shot off glass. Over to the corner, near side, three-pointer is off the mark, but Vice gets back the offensive rebound and back up. Vice now has four points in the ball game. Surprised to see Vice not get more work down low. He's got a pretty big mismatch. 14 to 10, 232, first quarter certainly will be something we take a lot a look at later on. And not only does he win by size, but also kind of the mass of him as well. You can just tell who he is out there on the court. I think Clark maybe got a finger on that ball before it got up. Miller, three-pointer from college range, off the mark. Vice tries to save it. They say he does, but he's out of action as he saved it to the Bolts. Opposite way, back a little toss. Had to be picked up there by Williams. Williams will shoot the deep three. This one is off the mark. Rebounded by Houston. You know, Clark does a pretty good job tracking those rebounds um, off the board. He's, uh, he's shown his worthiness so far to be out in that court. Corner three, this one is good. Phillips has found success in that corner. They keep going to him, and they're going to keep feeding him if he keeps making those shots. Phillips is now two of three from beyond the three-point line for six points here in the ball game. Straight away three, Thunder Basin trying to answer back, not able to do so, loose basketball on the rebound, pull the way of Williams for Thunder Basin. They work it to the near wing, back to the top they go, drive in, finger roll off the mark, Vice gets the rebound. Yeah, that's one that Bodie Williams needs to have. Opposite way, Houston 
It's a little bit of an open look and another shot knocked down. As that was Clark who now has four points in the ball game. 19 to 10 and we're gonna get our first time out with one minute remaining before the quarter. We should take a look in at Cole Larsh. Cole Larsh combined 29 points here in this first quarter. How has it been pace-wise courtside? Faster than it looked up there, I can promise you that. I mean, it's like every 15 seconds he's got it going on and scoring. 19 to 10. Again, Cole Larsh, our sideline reporter. And what's been interesting, too, is neither team, we talk about this fast pace, neither team has really uh, uh, dipped into their bench yet. Uh, yeah, you see that sometimes, too, Heath, and maybe it's early in the season, like you talked about, that sometimes you can't do that. But I, I think the abilities that these teams have, there are some bench players who can play really good minutes for both of these teams. 19-10. to 10. And again, Houston, don't worry about as much snow. Yes, they get snow in Tennessee, but not what we see up here in South Dakota. Eight games underneath their belt, so their bench maybe isn't as, as deep because they know what kind of rotation they want as well. Even Thunder Basin, a few more games compared to what we've seen here in the state of South Dakota. Kind of at the block there, shot off the mark, pushing tempo quickly the opposite way. It's DJ driving in and off the glass and good for two. Yeah, good fast break uh, work there from Houston as they got it down to DJ Miller and he made a nice, makes a nice finish off glass. And up to an 11 point lead now for Houston as this one's starting to get a little bit of a crack to it. And it, it's again been just that fast pace that maybe you haven't really noticed how big of a lead this has gotten up to for Houston. Back out they work it. Basin, Thunder Basin, excuse me, deep three. This one off the mark that time for Williams. And with seven seconds, controlled by DJ. Dribble in between the legs. Step up three. This one misses everything. Will go out of bounds. Buzzer goes off, and that is the end of quarter number one. 21 points from Houston out of the state of Tennessee. And they lead it by 11 as we head to the second quarter. That comes up here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV. Black Hills State University provides the opportunity to explore careers with more than 125 programs of study. With quality programs and passionate faculty, you can find the path to a career of your dreams. While exploring academic options, find adventure that awaits for you in the beautiful wilderness surrounding Spearfish. Get involved in one of the many clubs on campus. Learn to lead and gain the knowledge that puts you above the rest. Apply now at bhsu.edu. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Back at the world's only Corn Palace as we are just underway to start the second quarter. A deep three. This one is off the mark. 21 to 10. Houston from the state of Tennessee leads it over Thunder Basin from the state of Wyoming. Let's check in with our sideline reporter Cole Larsh. Cole, what kind of numbers were we seeing there in that first quarter from both teams? Well, here's the deal. 21 to 10. It looks exactly like that in the stat sheet. Houston, 60% shooting, 3 for 6 from 3 compared to Thunder Basin, 4 for 12 overall, 1 for 5 from 3, and 1 for 2 from the free throw line. Cole Larshar, sideline reporter. Charlie Preen off to the left of me. Troy Feasterman, our cameraman. Nathan, our producer. I'm Heath. Great to have you along here in the Hoop City Classic. A, a three pointer that falls through. As that was Howell who gets his first points to open up this second quarter. Five for him in the basketball game. 
Maverick Miller has it, and now contact made. It will go against Thunder Basin. Thunder Basin will now pick up their fourth team foul. That'll be on Schilling, his uh, first, I believe. Miller kind of got into him, and Schilling wasn't set. And that'll be an instant foul in all cases. As yeah, Schilling comes off the bench as well for Thunder Basin, 21-13, as Again, really have not seen only one player coming off the bench so far for Houston. As they move it around right now, DJ with the basketball. Move it to the near side, driving in. Let one defender go on by and able to finish it off is Cameron Clark. Clark can get up there. He's got some serious hops under him. Waiting for a slam dunk here, and we have only seen one so far. Here in this Hoop City Classic, coming in a game that Charlie and Cole had earlier with Hamlin. Yes, indeed. I believe it happened in the third quarter of that one. Remember who that was now? I Name's escaping not. me. I know. I, I can see his face. 23-13. Of course, slam dunks in high school, maybe not uh, as prevalent as you see at the next couple of levels. In the lane, over to the corner, drive baseline. Thought he had a look. The space, though, was cut off there by Vice. Quickly, the tempo opposite way, driving in, almost losing the basketball, trying to save it. Nobody there. Turnover, Houston. And that's Kylan Clark in the game now who just turned the ball over. Moving it around, Thunder Basin over to the wing. Three-pointer, this one off the mark. Rebounded by Clark. Clark carries it across the timeline. Works it over to, we believe, would be his brother. You'd think. Now getting it back, Clark, three-pointer. This one off the mark. Thunder Basin trying to attack it. One on two over under. It was not going to work out, but a foul call that will go against Vice, picking up his first. Yeah, you know, Vice has done a pretty good job down low as protecting the paint, and it's his job. But standing at 6'11", you'd think he'd be able to block more shots, keep his arms up a little bit higher than, than draping over. But now Thunder Basin kind of have guys, it seems like, spread all over the court here for this first free throw. Only one guy inside, and the free throw is off the mark. Shooting free throws right now is Caden. He has just two points so far in the ball game. Claussen comes back into the game. Six foot four, junior forward. Thunder Basin, I think, is just going to play defense against Miller at this moment. They only have one guy in to rebound here. And the free throw is off the mark. I guess they say, I don't know if that's conceding to the size already or, or what not, but. They're selling out for defense. I guess so. Let's see if it works out as it's. DJ Miller, who has it right now, to Clark. Down to Vice as a foul call. The shot is good, but it was foul before the shot. And the power dribble, he came up and was fouled just before he got the ball back to his hands. The whistle goes, and it's clear foul. Takes a whack there on the arm. Team fifth, and the foul came against Williams, picking up his first. Inbound right back to Vice. Double team, kick out, Miller, three-pointer, bingo! Really, Maverick Miller. Really nice stroke from Miller there. Miller now has five points in the ball game, 26 to 13. What you could say, the house that his dad built, number hanging in the rafters here. And now inside, this one good for two. That's Josh Clawson with his po first points. Thought Clawson might have got fouled on his way up there, but no call, and we go the other way. 26 15. Jumper off the mark, and then a rebounding foul that looked like Vice just kind of got pushed around that time. And Vice will pick up now his second personal and the sixth team foul. 26 15, 450, second quarter. Great to have you along for the Hoop City Classic here on Live Ticket TV. Thunder Basin trying to cut into this 11-point deficit. Move it to the top. Drive in. Pick up dribble. Far wing. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Try to get a pass in the lane. Takes deflection on its way through. Thunder Basin collects. 
It's Williams. Six seconds. Back over to the corner. Colossen. He lost it, and it's going to be Clark who picks up the loose orange. Excellent defense there from Houston. And now Miller is going to drive, and they're going to say no. Turnover on Maverick Miller. I believe he stepped out with his right foot there just before he collected the ball, and that resulted in that turnover. Getting interesting how this Corn Palace is set up as well. The way on this near sideline, the stands start to cave in on the corners. Otherwise, right there in the middle, the widest part with some seats for fans on watching. And a three-pointer. This one's good for Williams. And Williams, he now has two threes in the ball game for six points. And now down to just an eight-point lead for Houston. Trying to find some space. Move it around. Miller. Over to... Clark, Clark shot up and is off the mark. Or excuse me, that was DJ's shot was off the mark. And then a rebounding foul, and this will be the seventh team foul against the Houston Mustangs. Yeah, Cameron Clark went up and just, I mean, had, didn't have much of a shot at the ball and ended up in a foul. We're going to shoot some free throws, or shoot a free throw, possibly two. And now, Coach Rob wants a timeout. We'll step aside and take the timeout with them. We're back in just a moment here on Live Ticket TV. What if we said a bank isn't a place to lock up money? It's a place to set it free. What if the point of banking wasn't to bank at all, but to put your ideas to work? What if your bank asked, what if, a little more? Well, what if we told you we do? We're American Bank and Trust, where what if meets why not. If you are ready to change what you get out of banking, start a relationship with us. What if you made the move today? One of the best features of Let It Fly is the large patio space, which is perfect for enjoying a meal and a cold beverage. Of course, with over 20 different beverages on tap, it's also a perfect spot to watch all the sporting activities with over 80 TVs. You can catch your favorite team. That same variety extends the menu, which has a wide array of dishes to choose from. Let it fly. Also, your home for all games. The Hoop City Classic, whether in Sioux Falls or Memphis, Tennessee. Catch all the games at Let It Fly. One of our big sponsors of the Hoop City Classic. And speaking of Let It Fly, Clark does exactly that. He has his first points of the ball game. Yeah, Kylan kind of shows his range there, and it really, you know, maybe extends this Houston's offense. 29-18, to 18, Thunder Basin has been able to get back into this second quarter. But again, with that Clark 3, back up to double digits, and then a quick turnover as well for Thunder Basin. As Clark will bring it into the front court. Now over to Miller. Miller to the elbow. Kick back out to Phillips. Phillips right to left-handed dribble. Now controlled with DJ Miller. Miller gets it over to Clark. Clark kicks it to Miller in the corner. Three-pointer. This one off the back of the iron. Rebounded. Thunder Basin. 235 second quarter. Drive. Kick back out. Pump fake the three to the elbow, jumper, that one is good. Really good job of creating space there. Um, a just impressive job from Thunder Basin. 29 to 20. I believe that was Caden on the jumper as well. He's got four points in the ball game. Once again, Houston with their up-tempo, with their speed, quickly moving it around the court to Miller at the top. Over to the far side, they bring it, drive in. This shot is up and good by DJ Miller. And DJ Miller now with seven points in the ball game. No one has hit double figures yet for the Mustangs. And it's back up to an 11 point lead, 31 to 20, with 100 seconds remaining before halftime. DJ Miller does a really good job at creating space for himself and he's really, really fast and it helps him a lot. Back-to-back -back shots missed, and now a player is on the ground for Thunder Basin, who laid on the ground for a period of time there as action was swirling around. Luckily, he didn't get stepped on. I believe that's Quade Simmons. 
as it looked like he was holding his knee at one point and isn't getting up. Continues to motion as I'm not even for sure if we really have a trainer here on the court. 31 to 20, 92 seconds remaining here in the ball game. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by Best Western Ramcota in Sioux Falls. Make yourself at home with one of the 28, or excuse me, 228 individual decorated guest rooms featuring refrigerators and microwaves. Also, wireless internet access keeps you connected, and cable programming provides entertainment, private bathrooms with showers, tub combination, feature that deep soaking, and even more. Conveniences include safe, desk, and housekeeping provided daily, all at Best Western Ram Coda in Sioux Falls. Also, the same spot with a live ticket TV family stay when we travel for these classics all across the state of South Dakota. And now, slowly limping off, putting absolutely no pressure there on his left ankle. Wish the best for Simmons and his apparent injury. And Simmons. One of the main starters for Thunder Basin. We'll see just how hurt he is if he's able to make his comeback for later on. It's again Thunder Basin, another one of those teams that do have multiple games coming up here in this Hoop City Classic. Today is not their only game. 31 to 20. Houston with the basketball dribbling in between the legs. DJ Miller almost lost it. Now gets it over to Maverick as he drives in. Contact is made. Can't get the shot to fall, but he'll head to the free throw line. Maverick Miller so far just five points here in the ball game today. First free throw of two is up and gets this one to go. Four points for him here in this second quarter. Second free throw. Up, and this one is off the mark. So, Miller, one of two, 32 to 20, 107 in second quarter. Thunder Basin trying to get a little bit of a run here late in this half. Chip away at this double digit lead of Houston. Driving baseline. Now they're kicking it back to the top of the arc. As they move it over to this near side, dribbling between the legs for Williams. Williams to the free throw line, extended three-pointer. This one rattles in and out, but it's an offensive rebound. Corner three, this one is off the mark for Caden. And quickly, Williams is going to press tempo. He gets by two defenders, can't finish off the shot at the rim. He's slow to get up. It's back and forth action right now. Thunder Basin has it with Caden. Back to the top with Williams. Over to the corner, baseline drive, spin, right hand. This one good for Caden. Caden with a really nice spin move down low off glass makes it fall. Six points for him, the ball game, eight seconds before halftime. Miller, dribbling between the legs, down to block, in between traffic, able to finish it off. Maverick Miller able to hit the shot before the buzzer. He's got eight for the half, and that takes us to halftime. 34 to 22. It was an 11 point lead after the first frame. An additional point added. And again, 34 22. Houston leads it over Thunder Basin as we head to halftime. We'll catch up with our broadcast partner, Cole Larsh, and bring you the first half statistics. That's all on the way here in just a moment on Live Ticket TV. Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. Starting with First Bank in South Dakota was the easy part. Earning the confidence of local farmers, helping families account for their dreams, and securing the future for countless businesses took us a little longer. 
We owe it to the hard workers, big dreamers, and forward thinkers out there. Thank you for making South Dakota a great place to call home. Acres Ahead is back with AgTegra Cooperative. Now is the time to secure product, lock in early season prices, and receive delayed payment terms on your agronomy inputs. Fertilizer, seed, and crop protection purchases from Acres Ahead also qualify for triple play grain premiums, diesel discounts, and feed discounts. Contact your local AgTegra agronomist to learn more on how Acres Ahead can maximize your farm's earning potential straight from the start. AgTegra Cooperative, strong, stable, dependable. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menholt Auto Group. Denny Menholt Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks and SUVs, imports and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet. Starting the first bank in South Dakota was the easy part. Earning the confidence of local farmers, helping families account for their dreams, and securing the future for countless businesses took us a little longer. We owe it to the hard workers, big dreamers, and forward thinkers out there. Thank you for making South Dakota a great place to call home. At Northern State University, your future starts with an affordable education that's personalized for you. Experience hands-on learning guided by world-class supportive faculty. You'll also enjoy a full campus life with opportunities to choose from numerous student activities and events, all in a safe, welcoming community. At Northern, you'll find a college that's right for you, a place to belong. Your future starts here. Unleash your potential at Northern. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menholt Auto Group. Denny Menholt Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet. Say yes to 23 local and national lenders on hand competing for your business. Say yes to the most value for your trade with multiple appraisers bidding for it. Say yes and buy with no money down and no payments until March 2023. All credit applications accepted. Our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet. Every farm is unique, but all farmers have something in common. The desire to maximize their... Back here at the world's only Corn Palace. What was a competitive second quarter, or maybe you could just say, didn't see as much offense. It's currently a large lead for Houston as they lead it over Thunder Basin, 34-22. to Let's check in with our sideline reporter, Cole Large. Cole, what's your takeaway from that first half? I mean, it was kind of controlled by Houston throughout, but we saw plenty of speed. Your takeaway from that first half. I think overall it comes down to, like I said before, it's just a matter of... Or it looks the same on the stat book. I mean, Houston is just outplaying Thunder Base, and you look at the stats, they're shooting 54% of the field, 45% from three compared to Thunder Basin, 39% from the field, and 30%. Just, it just seems like Thunder Basin can't quite keep up with this Houston team. It's been a lot of speed from Houston, as you mentioned there, Cole. 34 to 22 right now here at halftime. I know, Charlie, you're kind of taking a look uh, at the stats as well. Is there anything that really jumps out to you when you take a look at this and say, man, this is what's been 
really the, the key distinctive thing. You know, a few things on the side of Houston. You look, we talked about Maverick Miller coming in needing to, well, I guess not necessarily needing to, but trying to hold himself up to a standard in which we talked about. Uh, at total points right now, he's got, what, um, I forget to get it on exactly, eight total points so far. And you go down the list, you got 50, number 55, DJ Miller, who currently has seven. And you, you keep going down the list, you keep looking at the uh, guys who need points here, and you look at 6'11", Brock Weiss, who has two fouls on the night number 10, you'd think he'd make more of an impact on there with his, with his size and his ability, but they're still leading by 12. Yeah, I think kind of what you're talking about maybe has been a blessing in disguise even. It's just the balance of scoring. I, I think, though, when you look at this Houston team and the way that just the size up, uh, and even the kind of the talent that we've seen so far, maybe it's the fact that we're just expecting points. But again, at the high school level, you have to say certainly putting up 34 points at halftime is a really good spot to be at. On the opposite side for Thunder Basin, is this a game that they actually had to start trying to control tempo, Charlie? Can they keep letting Houston run at a fast clip the way they are? You know, I'm not sure if they can stop Houston running at this fast clip. They are a very quick team. There's a difference between quick and fast. And Houston is quick. And if they're quick and fast, I mean, they are very, very fluid up and down the court. Thunder Basin is going to have to try to maybe dig into their bench a little bit more to keep fresh because Houston can move the ball up and down the court with ease. 34 to 22. We're going to take a quick break when we come back. It is the second half between Houston and Thunder Basin. That's on the way next here on Live Ticket TV. Their land and improve it for the next generation. You need a cooperative that offers peace of mind. Agtegra Cooperative is an ag partner that shares your values and is part of your community. From agronomy and grain operations to energy and feed, Agtegra will link your farm to the future. Agtegra Cooperative. Strong. Stable. Dependable. We hope you are all enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Your first car. It might not have been perfect, but that didn't matter. You loved it because you worked hard for it. You took care of it, and it took care of you, your friends, and maybe that someone special. And through it all, we were there working with you, for you, to make sure it was a smooth ride. Farmers Union Insurance. More choices, great rates, local agents. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Well, at the world's only corn palace, it's 34 to 22, and what has been, well, a jam-packed, busy day so far, and, well, if you enjoy high school hoops, it doesn't get any dimmer throughout the rest, I guess, can we still say afternoon, 4 o'clock here in the state of South Dakota, it's already basically sundown over in the state of Wyoming, we should probably say it's 3 o'clock down in Tennessee, uh, you know what, I'm going to have to... Now I'm now I'm nervous here. Germantown, Tennessee. I don't want to say it's 502. Are, are, do they fall in that block or not? I don't know. Oh, now I'm going to have to do some research while we take a look here. Cole Larsh, you're down there inside the huddles. What are you hearing? What is the strategy for both teams as we come out and get set for the second half? Well, first of all, I'd like to note, yes, Tennessee is in Eastern time zone. So it's 503 for them right now. Then in the halftime huddle, Thunder Basin, you know, overall in the whole game, they're playing decent offense. They just can't get a shot to fall. So that's their main focus, take better shots. And then on the defensive end, they're doing all right. I mean, they're really spreading out this Houston scoring, so there's not really a whole lot that they can do to improve that. Then the Houston huddle, they're saying, do the same thing we just did. I mean, we obviously outplayed them. We're up by 12 at halftime. Well, fix a little bit of the issue on static with Mike. Cole Larsh there too, so we can hear Cole just a little bit better. So we move along and start the third quarter as well. A deep three. Both teams 
bring out their starting five except for Thunder Base and missing, of course, their one player at the moment. We have not seen the return of Simmons after he rolled his ankle or there was some kind of apparent knee injury there in that second quarter. We have not seen him since. You know, getting an offensive rebound after Williams shot that deep three kind of showed a little bit more hope for Thunder Base and um, after they're kind of going after more boards here. And now driving, Miller had it stripped out of his hands. It goes out of bounds. It will stay with Houston, 7-14, third quarter. Certainly going to be something to watch in these first uh, two minutes or so is how the tempo rolls along and how the speed goes. They want to throw it down to Vice. And at that point, you just got to let the big man go up and get it. That's the third lob play we've seen today designed just like that. There's two in the first game and one in this game. First team foul for... Thunder Basin to get us underway. It's the second, though, that will go against the new starter, Josh Clawson, by the way, that replaced Simmons. 34-22, 7-0-4, third quarter. Miller's going to drive in. Charge is taken by Caden there, and Miller will pick up his first personal foul. Yeah, Caden in the right place at the right time. Miller drives in. Didn't quite see him right away. You know, Caden had his, had his feet set for an extensive amount of time down there. 34-22. We still await our first points of the third quarter. So again, it was really back and forth in that second quarter. It's just kind of been that separation 21 to 10 after quarter number one that Houston jumped out early and have been able to maintain this gap ever since. Thunder Basin with the speed, moving it around, drive in, shot is off the mark. Try to fight for the rebound. Basketball is still loose. Finally, DJ Williams comes. Or excuse me, DJ Miller comes away with it. They quickly work it up and trying to split the double team. Foul called as Cameron Clark couldn't finish it off there. Yeah, you know that's a pretty good offensive uh, possession from Thunder Base, and Howell can't get the finish down low. But you know they're showing more signs of life, and one of these one of these is bound to fall for Thunder Basin. It's a foul on Williams picking up his third personal and the second team foul. They do call it. A shooting foul as well for Clark. So he'll shoot two free throws. First free throw is off the front of the iron. So second free throw upcoming as make a couple substitutions here. As Vice will come out of the ball game. Again, this is a Houston team that hasn't gone deep into their bench. And now Second free throw. This one is up and good. For Clark, he now has seven points here in the ballgame. Moving around, Clawson, three-pointer off the mark. Offensive rebound, loose basketball, fight for it. Kind of hand-shoving. Maybe a foul should have been called, and now a timeout coming in for Thunder Basin. 35-22, to 22, a little bit of chicken fighting there want to take a look vice does join the huddle as he got substituted out there for a moment and he didn't join the bench like we see most players do he went behind and just was kind of walking around but he looks like he's okay now and almost even motioning ready to get checked back in to the basketball game or is he gonna head to the locker room. It appears he might be talking to somebody. And yeah, they were going to go back to the locker room. So, a little bit of action away from, well, I guess the court. But Vice is now heading into the locker room for Houston. Maybe he can head down to Larsh the next break to see, uh, get some information about what happened. Ball's being passed around, goes out of bounds. Let's do exactly that. Cole Larch, did you see anything overall for Vice on why he's out of the game? Looks like a little bit of a leg injury, maybe. Um, looked like he was heading over to some ibuprofen. Well, we'll see if they're able to find the ibuprofen. Back in the locker room, should be plenty of it back there. Colossen has it. Over the corner, three-pointer. This one off the mark, and it's rebounded. Thunder Basin's kind of having a hard time getting their shots to fall in this third quarter, Heath. And Thunder Basin has yet to score 
And we're past two minutes old into this third quarter. And against a Houston team like this, you need to find those shots. Clark goes up and gets it to go. Cameron Clark now nine points for him in the ball game. Again, no one has hit double figures for Houston yet. And Vice is back out there. Now Cole, I believe he's holding something in his right hand. I'm not for sure if you see it, what it is. We'll check back in. Now, dead ball, what is that? Purple Gatorade. Okay, he's checking back in now. He looks pretty good. I wasn't quite for sure what it was. Sugar, he's. <laughs> Sugar, I guess it is. Purple Gatorade. Cole, you a fan of Purple Gatorade? What's the, what's the Gatorade of choice for you? Blue. Well, what, there's multiple blue there, silly. Free throw is off the mark. The cool blue. Oh, there you go. That a baby. Cool blue, I would have to say. What, what do you say, Charlie? Uh, I'm a cool blue guy as well. Yeah, cool blue. It's got a certain flavor. The grape's not bad, though. I have to be in the mood for it. Very true. Be in the mood for it. Um, Clawson hits this second free throw. Fruit punch, the red, right? That's fruit yes. punch? Yes, yep, the red is fruit punch. That's never a bad option. Um, I'm not a fan, though, of Mr. Lemon Lime, the yellow. You might have hurt, just hurt a lot of people's feelings, Heath. I'll pat, I mean, if it's the last flavor, I'll take her. And orange, too. I, I'm not a big fan of orange. It's just, it's orange. Lame. You know, I, I strongly disagree. Orange is probably cool. my number two. I'm a cool blue guy all the way. There's no cool blue. I don't want it. Ball goes out of bounds. They try to work it down to Vice. Supporting that purple Gatorade. Schilling will come back into the ball game. Clawson will check out. Again, injury from Simmons, and he has never come back for the Thunder Basin Bolts. Wish the best for him. Hopefully he is not having to go to the ER here in town. Yes, and it was looked like some type of knee injury. Has never, I guess, really motioned down to his ankle. Three-pointer. This one is good. Yeah, points of Thunder Basin needed a, a good opportunity there from Thunder Basin. And that was Howell who is able to hit. Howell's got five points in the ball game. Miller made that shot look easy. Maverick Miller with that as well. First Houston Mustang to hit double figures. He's got ten in the ball game. Down underneath, shot deflected away by Vice. Now he comes away with it. Quickly opposite way. Miller has it. Underhand toss. Drive in. This one can't be finished off and goes out of bounds as a couple Basin players on top of each other. I'm, I'm no comment on that. Good Lord. We got, no. our, we got our cameraman getting involved in this. Cucumber? They make that? Uh, who knows with Troy Feaster, man. The guy's a little off his rocker. As my dad would say, his cheese done slid off his cracker. Yeah. 39 to 26, 357. A pass over in the corner went out of bounds. DJ Miller couldn't quite control the low pass that was just below his knees. Again, even in this kind of third quarter, neither team has really jumped out with a lot of points here as we're past the halfway mark. Just so much of a different feel, too, Charlie, from what we saw in the morning game. I don't know what they had for caffeine on the bus that morning game, but my lord, that was a lot of points. It was a lot of points. Hot shooting. Uh, rare, rare <laughs> misses did not come almost at all throughout that game. Quickly the opposite way. Driving in. Shot will fall for Clark. And Clark, he's now the leading scorer as he's got 11 points in the ball game. Oh, my goodness. They do make a Gatorade cucumber. That's line. gross. I don't, how do you even know what that flavor is, Troy? It's got to be like pickles. Three-pointer. This one is good. And that was Williams who was able to hit the three. He now has nine points in the basketball game. No, I'm sorry. He has 12 points. I miscounted that three for Howell when it was actually Williams. So all of Williams' points have come from beyond the arc, 12 of them. Driving in quickly, Caden has his shot blocked off the glass by Vice. 41-29. Up to... Miller, DJ Miller. They're going to go across court to Clark. Clark in with the left hand. Can't finish it off. Gets back his own rebound. He is fouled. Does this shot count? 
They haven't put it up there on the board they yet. They will count it. Cameron Clark with a beautiful finish down low. And a foul on Williams picking up his four at the third team foul. As mentioned, count the shot there from Clark. See now has seven points in this third quarter, 13 for the ball game. And he will tow the charity strike. 242, third quarter. Couple dribbles down, spin in the hand. Up, and this one is left short. That's where his only struggle has been. He's now missed a couple opportunities to score from the free throw line. 43-29, 2-28, third quarter. Drive in, bounce pass. Easy, wide open jumper, misses everything. And then trying to get the shot blocked. Ball goes out of bounds as Riley Schilling let Vice just go up and jump. An open look for him, and he never really took the shot. 14-point lead, 43-29, 2 third quarter. Miller. Across the Corn Palace logo here in Mitchell, South Dakota. Over to Clark, he'll shoot the three. This one off the mark. No one boxes out Miller quickly over to Maverick. Maverick, left-handed, over to the right-hand dribble. Puts up his shot, partially deflected. And it's... Thunder Basin, who comes away with the loose basketball. Quickly the opposite way. Now over to Claussen. Now to Caden. Caden just holding on to it. Work it to the near side. Ball is knocked out of bounds by Miller. 17 seconds on the shot clock. It will stay with Thunder Basin. Claussen will come out of the basketball game. And checking in. I'm not quite for sure who that is checking into the game. Caden. Again, just kind of the numbers all blend together yes, from our do. spot. Shot. This one gets the friendly roll for Caden. Caden, his first points of the second half. He's got eight for the ball game. 43-31. 1-12, third quarter. Thunder Basin not letting this one get away from them, and they're playing not too bad offensively. Can't get a stop defensively. Missed shot. Clark gets the offensive rebound, goes right back up with it. He now has five points off the bench, the only bench scorer for Houston. Ball goes out of bounds on the pass, as it was Miller who last touched it. Again, the Hoop City Classic as we move right along. Plenty more coming up including Campbell County will be taking on Mitchell. We saw the girls of the Campbells win that earlier. Boys action to follow. And there's a slamma jamma from Vice. We've been waiting for it all game long, and he throws it down. Boy, he makes that look easy, Heath. <laughs> oh, he did. He certainly did. First dunk. Since game three, turnaround jumper the opposite way. That one good for McCarty. 43, excuse me, 47-33. And now a timeout is going to be called with just under 18 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Check back in with Cole Larsh. Cole, I felt that was a good slam dunk. Was there much of a crowd reaction from that dunk? No, actually, and that's what I'm really surprised about because that was a monster dunk. I don't know if <laughs> you can't say these fans are used to hearing it around here. Right. Maybe you should expect it from a team like this, though. I guess. Cole, anything specific being said by Coach Rob in there at the huddle who just called the timeout? No, they're just drawing up a last-second play here that they're going to try and hold the ball and get the last shot in this quarter. Not sure who it's going to quite go to, but there might be an ISO here somewhere along the lines. They have, yeah, they have it drawn up for someone, I'd assume, because no one was designed to take the ball out. 47-33. And with shot clock off, Cole just mentioned it. Last-second shot, trying to add to this 14-point lead. 
It's Miller who currently has it. DJ, that is, picks up his dribble with three seconds over the corner to Clark. Fadeaway jumper. This one off the mark. And whatever the play was, it doesn't work out. But still a 14-point lead. 47-33. to 33. We head to the fourth quarter. That comes up next here on Live Ticket TV. You'll say yes to our year-end sell-down at the Denny Menholt Auto Group. Denny Menholt Toyota and Rushmore Honda have moved their used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for a year-end sell-down. Say yes to a big selection. Over 360 used cars, trucks and SUVs, imports and domestics. Say yes to big savings. Buy with no money down and make no payments for 90 days. That's no payments until March 2023. Say yes to a great value. Hurry, our year-end sell-down ends December 31st at Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet. At Northern State University, your future starts with an affordable education that's personalized for you. Experience hands-on learning guided by world-class supportive faculty. You'll also enjoy a full campus life with opportunities to choose from numerous student activities and events, all in a safe, welcoming community. At Northern, you'll find a college that's right for you, a place to belong. Your future starts here. Unleash your potential at Northern. 47 to 33, welcome back to the Hoop City Classic. Wyoming, South Dakota, Tennessee, all being represented right now here in this matchup of coming up next, we're gonna see the South Dakota-Wyoming clash again. In fact, it's four straight Wyoming teams in a row here. Passed out to Miller, oh! He gets fouled, count the bucket, Charlie. Slam dunk stolen away. Yeah, it was stolen away. He was going up for it. And you know what? I think that was a foul just to uh, stop the humiliation because he would have ended up on a poster. 12 points for Miller now in the ball game. The and one opportunity off the mark. And this is now the biggest lead of the ball game, 49-33. to 33 For Houston Mustangs over Thunder Basin. For Thunder Basin, it's all about just seeing if they can't get a little bit of their offense going as they continue to struggle a bit in that third quarter. Only put up 11 points. It was a great finish there, but I feel like Vice had the opportunity to block it, just kind of chose to stay back and keep his arms up. 49-35, 14-point lead. Clark gets a little bit of space, drives in, uses the left hand, can't finish it off. Vice trying to get the put back. He fumbled it away. It's a three on two. Over to the near side, to the top of the key. Straight away three. This one off the mark for Caden. And here comes DJ Miller. Quickly the opposite way. Gives off to Phillips. Off balance. Three. Never set his feet. Leaves it short. He was leaning into that heavily and still missed shorties. A little bit of a surprise there and taking it kind of from NBA range. And this one, same way. I'm not quite for sure what these two teams are doing. It's almost like if you can do it, you want to see what I can do. A game of horse out there. But neither team making shots. DJ pulls up three-pointer. This one too strong off the back of the iron. Rebound by Thunder Basin. And right now we're just seeing a trade of three-pointers, it seems like. But no one really making. Inside, Clawson. Gets it. Clawson made a nice cut there. Got behind Vice, and it's pretty hard to block those shots if you're that wide open. Clawson, five points here in the ball game, 49 to 37. We will cut the stream after this one. We will be done with this stream. You'll have to refresh the page, and you'll be able to find a new stream as we're going to switch back some old equipment. Three-pointer. This one is good for Phillips. Yeah, Phillips has proved himself to be a deadly shooter. And you know, if he continues working on the shooting ability, he's going to be a special, special player coming up. Nine points for him, all coming from beyond the arc, but it was his first three-pointer since the first quarter. 52 to 37. Three is off the mark. That ball had nearly no backspin. He's driving in. William, excuse me, Miller off the mark. Vice, he can't finish off his shot, trying to get back his own rebound. Loses the basketball, 52-37. Vice is kicking himself for that one. 
15 point lead, 4.55 as this one's starting to kind of move along. Put back on the reverse is good for Williams. And Williams now with 14 points in the ball game. Three from Miller. No, foot on the line, count it for two. Still a pretty good shot from Miller though, showing his range. 14 points now for Maverick. The leading scorer for Houston. Corner three, this one is off the mark. Rebounded by Miller. Quickly into the front court, over to Phillips. Three point for him, bingo! Kid can shoot the ball. <laughs> All 12 of his points coming from beyond the arc. Three different scores to hit double figures for Houston, 57 to 39. Pick up dribble. Drive in, up with the shot, and this one good with the left hand for Caden. And now a timeout for Thunder Basin. And we'll step aside and take the timeout with them. We're back in just a moment here on Live Ticket TV. Hey Hoop City Classic fans, it's Andrew Kuyper with Plains Commerce Bank. And Corey Merrick in the Mitchell area. We just wanted to say thank you for voting us the local best in mortgage and real estate loans 10 years running. And we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good luck to your favorite teams. Enjoy the game. Back here at Live Ticket TV, this is the Hoop City Classic brought to you by our fine sponsors. Has joined with Cole Larsh on the sideline. Cole, what was kind of the talk here as we're past the halfway point of this fourth quarter? A 16 point lead. Uh, with your Thunder Basin, what are you talking about right now at that timeout break? Well, mainly, I think what he's talking about is offensively so far this quarter, they haven't been doing terrible. But as you just saw, defensively, they are just letting Houston run over them. Phillips has now hit three threes in this fourth quarter. 15 points for the ball game. A shot that took a deflection on its way through by Miller. And by the way, with those five threes now from Phillips, he's the leading scorer. Wow. So we're seeing a battle for the leading scorer and collision. Phillips hits the deck hard there. Haven't seen a whole lot of fouls, especially in this quarter. Uh, Cole Larsh, I'm going to bug you as well. Pay attention. It looks like we have some guys walking around behind you that might have your starting lineups for the next game. So you might want to be paying attention to that just a little bit. As Clark drives in, shot is off the mark, loose basketball. As we're seeing just kind of fast pace back and forth right now. 19-point lead. This one's well in hand for Houston. But neither team slowing anything down. Drive in, back out. Caden drives the lane, foul called. And two free throws upcoming. You know, Heath, this might be the game that Houston needs to kind of feel themselves out, understand who they are, what they can do, what their abilities are, and, and go back to Tennessee and possibly find success after this Classic. Yeah, a team that does have more games coming up here in the Classic but as you mentioned, two and six coming into this. More games than what we see from a lot of other teams that enter this tournament. In fact, they have played the most out of everyone. Um, and just that competition, it's going to be different and kind of get their feet wet, get some wins if they can underneath their belt, and, and a good victory here as well. I mean, even scoring 60 points, they have really looked dynamic. You know, these guys, or uh, I guess Houston specifically, will have eight or nine games under their belt before some South Dakota teams play nine. It'd probably be in the middle of January. Heath. Yeah. Quick action as well, let's talk about back and forth. have now kind of seen things back-to-back -back fouls being called. It's the sixth team foul against Thunder Basin. And is a shooting foul, so we will see. Now Clark head to the free throw line. He's got 13 points here. Trying to score in all quarters tonight, and he's able to hit the first one. 
So he does exactly that. He's got 14 points. Again, Phillips with three threes in this fourth quarter. A total of five threes for the ball game. He is the leading scorer. But now Clark has a chance to tie him up at that mark, but leaves the free throw short. Gets back his own rebound and back up and good. Wowzers. So with that, Clark now has 16 for the ball game. 20 point lead. Drive in, low pass, back to the top. Thunder Basin moves it with Williams. Williams over to the near side, driving baseline, kick over to the wing. Free throw line extended, back out. They continue to move it around, trying to get some space. Drive in and foul is going to be called as this one will go against Phillips. The smallest guy out there, it looks like, on the court. Gets picked up by a couple different players and this will also be Houston. They're calling off the dogs. Line change, Heath. Houston will bring in all of their second team. It looks like, if I'm correct, everyone who dressed today has gotten their chance to play. With 2-14, Houston is chalking this one up with the win. Might as well up by 20. Thunder Basin hasn't quite gone that deep in their bench yet. They still have all their starting five, or a majority of their starting five, I should say, still out there. And now Williams hits a three-pointer, and this is what we're going to see as well, as now Thunder Basin is also going to concede. Williams, by the way, will finish with 17 points here in the ball game. And we'll see a change of the starting five. Charlie, you're going to have the next game between Campbell County and Mitchell, which we expect at least from the Mitchell side of things. You know, I've called Mitchell earlier this year because um, I do the play-by-play -play up, or I guess I do the, the color for the production up in Huron, and I've had the opportunity to watch the Mitchell Colonel boys, and they are a very impressive team. Um, they have a couple kids who are going to really surprise you. They have a freshman who's really good who will kind of shock you. Um, I believe it is Colton Smith who can – Flat out shoot the rock is a really good all-around player and a player that we'll see um, coming up here. And it's a, he's a kid to talk about. He's going to be special, and he is special as a freshman. He wears number 20, a kid to talk about. Thunder Basin, however, not sure what they're going to bring to the table. We'll get to them in a little bit, but should be a good one. Thank you, Troy Feasterman, as well for the paperwork here in my hand. Needed that. Help out these guys in the broadcast a little bit more. 63 to 46, 145, fourth quarter. Clark drives in, slam dunk. Huge dunk there by Kalen Clark as he had nothing but real estate there in the lane, and he cashes it home. Yeah, Kalen was in the air for a long time, hung on the rim for a little bit, but it was a safety thing. Oh, as I mentioned, don't mention that to Matthew Morris, who now plays at South Dakota State. University, he got himself in plenty of trouble hanging on the rim. And even if it was just kind of, as you mentioned, a safety thing, trying to throw away there, turnover, Thunder Basin, quick little two points, 65 to 48. 60 seconds remaining here in the ballgame. As we mentioned, Houston will move to three and six on their season. Moving it around. From side to side. Get it back to the top now. As controlling it is Will. Back to Clark. Clark fakes the pass. Now switch to his left hand. Drives in. This one can't finish it off. Thunder Basin quickly the opposite way. Jumper. This one's off the mark. Rebounded. And for Houston, they can let this one Come on down and finish this one off. 65 to 48 is your final score. As our next game comes up here in just a moment. Again, next up is Campbell County taking on Mitchell. Getting final score, 65 to 48 as Houston beats Thunder Basin. Before we get to that next game, Charlie, final takeaways from this game between Houston and Thunder Basin. You know, it's a big game for Houston, building on what 2-6 and six record they had now. 3-6, and six, um, it's a big win for them. You know, being uh, 250 now in the season, it's a big thing for them. And I believe that it'll help them down the line um, in everything that they do. 
But Houston looked pretty good on the perimeter today and inside. If they can get a little bit more work with um, with Vice down low and, you know, driving kick out, they have some weapons. And they'll show us again because we get to see them two more times uh, throughout this classic. They can flat out shoot the rock, and it's, it's fun to watch um, what they can do. It really didn't feel like it was a 20-point blowout like that, or it ended up being 17, but a 17-point blowout just happened. And it ended up pretty uh, pretty out of hand, if you will. But Thunder Basin, um, they've gone through a lot recently. And, you know, props to them for coming out and giving a really good effort against a really pretty good team in Houston. Well, we're going to step aside. In fact, we're actually going to end the stream here. We do ask that you just refresh as we'll have the pregame coming up here in just a moment for Mitchell and Campbell County as we're going to switch over a little bit of equipment up here in the broadcast booth. But we'll be back in just a moment for, well, our evening session. That's on the way next here on Live Ticket TV.